right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Uh, make sure you click that subscribe button underneath. Give us a like. Hit the bell. We are trying to get that thousand subscriber mark right now. So definitely give us some support. Share with your friends. All that stuff. Uh, to the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today on the podcast, my good friend for a very long time, Jamar Sanders. How you doing, Jamar? Pretty good, brother. How about you? Uh, I'm doing great, man. Having a good time. We were having a great conversation out there uh, oh, yeah. beforehand. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, stoked to have you back on the podcast. Appreciate of you, Of course. Brother. You were on. Uh, you were on the very first episode with uh, Anthony and Ray. Yes, nice. I remember so, that. Yeah, some to the fullest alumni. Oh yeah, as it were. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, no, I'm stoked, man. So how you been doing, man? You've been uh, surviving, staying, uh, staying busy during the uh, pandemic and all that. Oh yeah, just trying to stay out of the way, man. You yeah, know, you can't get too involved or do anything right now. So well, it's opening up a lot more, but you know, when it first happened, you know, you just kind of wanted to stay out of the way. Oh yeah, man. I had uh, you know, stay indoors and uh Yeah. No, I know. remember, I remember like, you know, this is when you actually started to, you know, really take off with the podcast and everything. I remember walking in, I'm like, Jesus, what are they doing? Is <laughs> they recording an album in the living room? But <laughs> Oh man. No, man. No, you've you've done your thing, brother. This is really nice in here. I really Really digging your new studio, brother. Thank you, man. The new studio, Space Brain Station Productions, SBS Productions. It's come together really well, man. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're proud of you, brother. Thank you so much. Good job, man. Yeah. We've, uh, yeah, we used to have to tear the whole living room apart, <laughs> yeah. turn everything around. And, yeah. you know, it was a. It was a mess, man. It was definitely a big sacrifice we made to kick this thing off. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, now we're doing a lot better. We got the. Beautiful SM7Bs. I love these microphones, just like all the big wigs, uh, oh, you know, yeah. Joe Rogan and all them use nah, on their podcast. Big coming up here pretty soon, man. I hope so. That's nah. definitely the goal, you know. Nah, I'm trying to coming, get this man. thing monetized. You coming. And then you got your studio and everything set up, man. Just wait till everybody just sees it, you know what I mean? You haven't even put the word out just yet, and everything is opening up. So, yeah, yeah man, I think you're going to do it, brother. I think you got to... A really good good thing going right now. I'm real happy about it, man. I'm real happy about oh, yeah. it. Yeah, we've been doing uh, we've been doing a few little things, man. I got some mastering stuff here. I was nice. working with uh, my buddy Keith Roberts and this company Accessibles, which oh. is actually where we got these new booms nice. from Accessibles. Nice. Uh, and I got a bunch of other stuff from them as well. It's a great company. Nice. So they've been a uh, great support of us. We were making some commercials for them. Nice. So yeah, if uh, you know anybody out there needs commercials, maybe we were making you know their uh, anything, their Amazon man. product videos and stuff like that. Yeah, we're doing pretty much everything. We the got beat. He's got a studio over here. You know what I mean? If you're an artist, anything. You know what I mean? Cartoons, anything. Voiceovers. This is the man right here. Yeah, we're doing a lot, man. We're doing a lot. And uh, I even got the uh, PA stuff. We're trying to do PA yeah. rental. We got a okay. music video shoot coming up. That's what I'm saying. So. Man. I'm telling you, you're gonna be the whole thing. They're gonna be like just you know show up. You're gonna set the speakers up and. Probably direct the whole shoot and everything. They just have to show up. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, you're gonna do it. And then, like you know, I think pretty soon here, a big thing's gonna be um, the difference between private and public. You know what I mean? Like you know, like private events. I think are going to start really boosting. You know, especially with the coronavirus and the getting the jab, as some people call it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know, a lot of people. I think it's gonna be pretty soon like hey i just want to have a private party you know i don't really want to worry about or hey i just want to record in a private studio you know what i mean where everything's sanitized i don't want a big studio where everybody's coming by or you know i think a lot of people are going to start going a lot smaller than you know bigger i believe so well, that, that would be great for me i uh i'm definitely a smaller operation <laughs> yeah no, well we gotta uh you know bring the economy back with a uh, small business right yeah, that's it, man. You know, you know and we got to, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to uh, to fill in the gaps where, you know, unfortunately a lot of people fell off and they had to shut yeah. down. And I was even involved with a club, you know, I had a lot of equipment in a club that was about to open up right before the pandemic. I oh, invested at the worst time possible. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we were, uh, and so, yeah, a lot of places, you know, they had to shut their doors and it's pretty sad, but uh, hopefully some of us can benefit on the, yeah. the next round of this thing and well, unfortunately that's the way that it's been working you know what i mean if you can catch the 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 tide when it's down you know what i mean you can ride the wave once it comes back up so you know unfortunately that's been the way that it's been for a while now 
You know what I mean? The old guys got to get out and the new people got to come in. So, yeah. Well, but, we, we were definitely primed over here, man. I have, uh, I have definitely invested and, in, uh, and prepared and gotten us really primed to, to bring this thing back when the economy kicks back in and whenever oh, yeah. the, uh, the limitations are, are taken away, which I believe is supposed to happen here pretty soon. I think June 1st, right? Yeah, June 1st. Yeah. And actually, I think by the time this airs, it'll be right around that. So, nice. yeah. Nice. Well, that would be nice, though. I know that uh, <laughs> I don't know how they're going to control it now, you know, going to the casinos without if, you, if you're vaccinated, you know, you don't have to wear a mask. And, you know, it's like 100 people coming through the door at the casinos. So they're going to stop everyone and say, hey, uh, you got your card? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know how they're going to control that. That's going to be pretty scary. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say scary. You know what I mean? I'm not scared of it, but, yeah. you know, it's going to be, you know, pretty wild. You know what I mean? Some people are just going to, you know, walk around with their masks, even though a lot of people haven't been wearing their masks correctly anyway. Yeah. You know, so I'm I'm not going to say, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's nothing small. Yes, we had a pandemic. Yes, we need to, you know what I mean, be a lot more courteous, a lot more common courteous to people. You know what I mean? We need to respect people's space. We need to, you know, not think about ourselves so much. You yeah. You know what I mean? So if people are asking you to wear the mask, just wear the mask. You know what I mean? And if you if you go somewhere and they're not, you know, enforcing the mask, then <laughs> yeah. go with it. You know what I mean? That's how I've been doing it, man. It's just a it's just a basic respect thing at this point, man. If you're right. going to be, you know, you're going to be respect respectful person to the people around you you know you 100 percent. you cooperate with that and you know put your own beliefs aside for a little bit and just right, go yeah right, man right. if this is what people require for me to use their business or you know even enter their homes i know we went uh we went to go visit angela's father in the middle of the pandemic in yeah. november we went out there to arkansas which oh. was actually a huge hot spot yeah and uh and we were wearing the masks even inside of her dad's house. Like we never, his, he's he's older, he's yeah, got health that. problems, and we were trying to respect that. And so we, the mask just never came off until we he wasn't around, and right. we were back at our Airbnb chilling. Right. Which, by the way, Airbnb in Arkansas is, is so such a great thing. I like, yeah. I, I mean, it's so chill out there, and you know, oh, just surrounded nice. by trees, and animals are coming right up to you, and it's beautiful out there, man. It's beautiful, but we did actually, we did get the virus on the way back. We, uh, cause no one was wearing, other than that part, right? So like that side of her family was wearing the, uh, nice. wearing masks and then the other side of the family was, you know, they were like, nah, we're, we're not participating in this bullshit. Right. It's not real. It's all a hoax. Well, no, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. And then, <laughs> well, no, you know, it's just, uh. And then we all ended up getting it. You know, by the time we got back, we're like, <clears throat> I'm going to feel a little sick. And then <laughs> we had a phone call and they're like, literally the whole family just tested positive. We went and <laughs> we went and got uh, gotten one of those crazy lines, like a freaking uh, Day of the Dead movie. Oh, man. And uh, I don't know if you've done one of the, the, the public free COVID testings. No, I haven't. I haven't had to. So thank yeah. God. You know, every time I had to take one, it was something kind of important. So they wanted to make sure you got in and did it one properly. So. Oh, dude. Yeah. No, we went to uh, we went to one where there's the militaries out there. Oh, yeah. and they got doctors and all these mat and these big like get ups and shit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was straight out of a movie, man. It was it really it looked like some apocalyptic scene in a movie. And we we had to wait for like ninety minutes, two hours oh, in a wow. in our car and like this oh, wow. thing oh, like that goes around the parking around. lot. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, in the Texas station was where it was at. And then how did they get the results? Or they emailed you guys the results and everything, or you had yeah. to wait? Yeah, no, they emailed us the they emailed us the results, and you know, of course, we came up positive. Ruined Thanksgiving. Everyone's pissed. <laughs> They're like, "What? The, you're not coming over for Thanksgiving dinner right, and all right, that?" And right, it's right, like, right. "I'm not gonna come over for Thanksgiving right, when I just spirit. tested positive for COVID two weeks ago, uh, or a week ago, or whatever it ended up being." Um, it just wasn't practical. That's kind of rude to right. just get, like not not care about anybody else's health around you for yeah, your own no, sake. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, but so. I think everybody had the coronavirus anyway. I think I said yeah. that before on the last podcast. But if you had a cough, you know, what I mean, and they were talking about asymptomatic, you know, what I mean, I think everyone had the coronavirus. You know, some people just were like, "Hey, I'm not dying, so I'm okay. I don't need to go get tested. You know, I'll just self quarantine." Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thought it was more like the chicken pox at first. You know, once everybody <laughs> get it, you know what I mean? We'll build up antibodies against it. You know what I mean? It'll just 
die down but you know listening to the scientists and you know going into more research and reading like oh okay yeah okay wow this can develop it can do a lot of different things this is not the chicken pox yeah you know so yeah it's some it's it's crazy how it worked out man and i mean i lost i lost two buddies in the middle of the coronavirus oh, and then uh from corona yeah and uh oh, wow. and then uh, they have any... technically my my grandmother who was 90 something she passed in the middle of it they said it was corona i mean who knows if it was corona or not she was in a, a retirement home so right 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 probably was they were they, they were getting hit pretty hard with that kind of stuff so I mean, it definitely was dangerous. You oh know, yeah, I, I'm. You know, I know. Did they have any um, uh, pre-existing conditions? She, yeah, she was. Uh, she was pretty old, and um, uh, another one of my friends was going through cancer and all that. So he was getting you know chemo treatments, and oh, okay, so his immune yeah. system was already affected. And then, uh, and then my other buddy ended up uh, just getting it and having a real hard time with it for a long time. Yeah. And then uh, I just I heard I heard he passed, oh, and man. it was weird because. You know, we're all quarantined from each other. And so, like, contact and keep in touch and all that was kind of awkward, really? especially for me. Like, I was um, I was getting off all the social media and everything because it just was getting... Crazy, yeah. It was getting gross, yeah. I didn't really like it. People and uh, nothing else better to do but, uh, you know, yeah. shame and trash. And then I think, well, the George Floyd thing happened right after, right, when we went into pandemic. So, you know what I mean? It was just kind of like stupid you know meaning no one else was doing anything but talking about you know just nonsense you know i'm not saying george floyd that that was absolutely horrible but oh, you yeah. know some of the things that came after that i'm like dude like <laughs> come on bro we got to be a lot better than this oh yeah you people know? burning down their entire neighborhoods and <sighs> cities just to basically just to get out of their house i think right. yeah no 100 uh, i think it, so it, too it was it was pretty uh right it was pretty sad to see that response from people. I mean, you know, it's... Yeah, I can understand, you know... Outrage is outrage, though. Right, right. I can understand do? some of it, but, you know what I mean, if... It's got to be a better way. You yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. You know, it's got to be, you know what I mean, let's do this the right way. You know what I mean? But we live and we learn, you know what I mean? Yeah, we do. Um, well, most of us do. Some of us don't. <laughs> yeah. Some that, of us that refuse, you know, they're... We're, a lot of people I've uh, I've heard talk just uh, they were born with knowledge of all things and you can't tell them anything and they'll never learn a goddamn thing in their life. Right. And they're gonna run around with their foot in their mouth forever. Yeah. Well, you remember that's remember the first time we met. You know what I yeah. mean? Like we were talking and then I was like, "Hey, do you read the Bible?" And you were like, like "Oh yeah." Holy shit! Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know what I mean? But like, it's so amazing how you know you get to go through life with people and like I'm now you know you know probably more about the bible than i do yeah you know what i mean so it's it's crazy how people grow you know from from being you know this young from being one way and then maturing into another you know what i mean just realizing that everything is not so much about you you know what i mean the world Absolutely. is such a giant place there's so many people that you can learn from you know what i mean i learn from little kids all the time you know what i mean there's just so many things that you can be expired, um, ex inspired from, you know what I mean? If you just open your mind and just allow things to, you know, come in, you know what I'm saying? Like like you said, everybody, like what did you call them earlier? You know, they were born with, you know, infinite knowledge. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I was definitely, I was definitely part of that category as well. well. I was too. very convinced that, uh, that I knew what I was talking about and that, uh, we all but, you know, I was, uh, I, I stood on the, I stood on the, the side of the fence of, uh, extreme atheism. Where yeah. I was just like, this, <laughs> these, this is all there is, you know, yeah. and, yeah. uh, you know, when you die, it's just, it's just, that's the end of the game. Right, and, right, right. Uh, and I just thought, uh, religion in general was kind of a silly thing and that I, you know, I was outsourcing all my emotions to my outside, my outside world and right. this physical right. existence and it completely ignoring myself internally which led to a big breakdown for me mentally as well well, well the funny part was like you know what i mean i was kind of going from the opposite side you know i grew up you know hardcore you know christian you know going to church three times a week you know on the usher board well you know I me mean, my brothers never on the usher board i always had to stand by the door you know and i was too bad and i just couldn't stand there in the aisle you know what I, mean? I just couldn't do it so you just open the door for people yeah but you know i was there every day so you know listening to the stories and you know like if you don't believe in Jesus, you know, you're going to hell and all kind of like, you know, things that like, oh, my God, I like 
You know what I mean? But it was so hard for me to gather as a kid because I'm like, how can I believe in something that I can't see? You know what I mean? You're telling me that I have to do this, but you know what I mean? I, I, I don't see it, you know what I mean? But as I got older, you know, I felt, you know, what God really was, you know what I mean? To to take, you know, push you to the next level to like, you know, if something happens, you're like, oh, okay, well, that was God. Or, wow, I could have, you know, died there. Or, you know what I mean? Wow, thank God I didn't do this. You know what I mean? And growing up and, you know, everyone saying, hey, well, you have to believe this. You have to do this. And when I met you, you were like, man, screw that, bro. Yeah. You got to be free. Ain't no God out there, dude. Man, ain't nothing going to happen to you, bro. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, this guy's going to hell. You yeah. know what I mean? And then I do my research and I start reading and I'm like, oh, well, 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 maybe they do have a point here. You know what I mean? Like, just so many things that we can go into, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, I mean, that's why I started reading the Bible, you know, right. like, uh, I was interested in, uh, I was interested in all, all points of view sure. after a while because my own perspective was not enough. It, right. it just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't prove everything right. Right. beyond the shadow of a doubt. And like, really, um, there's no difference between say a hardcore atheist and a hardcore Christian no way. where... You know, they're both sides of the same coin where they're both super convinced they're right and there's no wiggle room yes. for a conversation there. Yes. You know, and it's uh uh it just is a it's not the best place to come from. Right. And you're not really gonna learn anything about yourself or about anybody else or about the world for that matter. 100%. If you if you're just walking around thinking you're right all the time. Right. And that's that's really where I um I started my research into all the different religious processes, the spiritual processes. And it all actually stemmed from, um, you know, when I had that breakdown and I was, you know, I really fell into like a suicidal depression and I yeah. was very confused about my own reality because I was unable to make myself happy anymore with drugs and, and mm -hmm. you know, at the outside world and just, you know, partying and having a good time. Yeah. And, uh, and it really came down to a lot of, uh, like, therapy, self-help books, psychology books, philosophy, religion, yeah. all these things that I was ignoring because of my beliefs. I was, that's that was exactly what I was going to say. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know I'm probably going to upset some people by saying this, but atheists is a religion as well. It is. Because you have to believe that there's no God, that, you know, that you have to believe these certain things. And that's the same thing with Christianity or any other religion. Well, I'm not going to put every religion into that, but yeah. with Christianity, you know, if you're a Christian, basically you're saying Jesus is Lord. You know I mean? That's the only difference between you being a Jew, a Muslim, and, you know, a Christian. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? For me, the atheism is, is the same thing. You know, you have to believe a certain way in order to, you know what I mean, truly, you know, accept what's going on. Yeah. And and it's all just a it's all just a a flavor for the world that you're perceiving around you man you know you can it, when you're in that place it seems like the right thing to do at the time right. whenever i was um that in that very atheistic uh materialistic state yeah. i was very convinced that that's the way the world was and everybody else was ignorant of and not wanting to face reality yeah and um and i was very confident in the fact that i knew what i was talking about and then slowly as I um, would say I matured and did more research and opened my mind and actually was like accepting of these facts and these, uh, well, not, I don't even want to say facts at this point, uh, these concepts right. where um, like the Bible, for instance, which is, I mean, we live in a world that was created by the Bible and the Christian yes. and the Western religions, the, the Islam, Christianity yes. and uh, Judaism. Yes. You know, and, uh, and that's the world we live in. I mean, you know, you talk about um, like God created the world in six days and rested on Seven, the seventh yeah. day. And it's like, how many days of the week are there? Right. Right. And it's like your basic, basic fundamentals of your reality right. are based around one. the Bible. Yeah. And it's like, uh, um, fuck, what was the other one? It's like, uh, what year is it? Right. Right. No, it's it's uh, 2021 after the death of Jesus. Jesus. Right, right, right. And it's right. like, yeah, so your whole foundational reality is based on the Bible. So you can't just throw that away right. and say that this has no effect on me and this has nothing to offer because it has a lot to offer. Yeah. And uh, and it has a lot. It can explain a lot about the the fundamental reality that you exist in right now. 
I'm not saying that you have to go out and believe 100%. that, you know, that the Christian version of the religious philosophy is the only version or philosophy that's worth accepting. Right. But it is something that you have to take into consideration when you're forming your reality around you because it is part of your reality. Oh, no. So just as much as everybody speaks English in, in this country, it's not like we don't have an official language in America, but the majority right. of people are English speaking speak, people. Yes. You can't go around just saying that that's not true. Right. And I think that's what a lot of the problem is too. You know, everybody, like you said earlier, everybody lives in their own reality. So, you know, they want to be like, oh, no, well, that's God. But, you know, look on the dollar and God we trust. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, when you get married, you know, under the image of God, you know what I mean? And then, like you were saying, something like in the Bible, too, like if you look at our, like the way that our brain and everything is shaped, you know what I mean? Or like what it looks like on the picture kind of looks like the universe. Yeah, it you know? absolutely does. You know what I mean? So when he says made, in, made in, in my image, you know what I mean? If you look around, everything is kind of connected in a way. Yeah, it's all the same thing, man. 100%. It's all uh, the, in in Buddhism, they get into the illusion of this reality. And one of the major illusions is the illusion of separateness, that your physical being is a separate thing from the world around you. And you're not, it, it's it's completely untrue. You're, yes. you are the world, right? You're, you're a part of it. Yes. If you take your perspective away from yourself and you, perceive reality from say a third person perspective you're just another one of these people that's existing on this planet that came out of this planet and will go back into this planet right i mean every every particle in your body is it came from a sun that right. exploded fucking millions or billions of years ago right. that collected on this planet and created the soil and the soil created plant life and the plant life was eaten by animals and mm -hmm. we're part of those we eat the plants we eat the animals yep and and you're just nothing but that that soil that particulate like it's 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 all just a cycle 100 percent. you know there's no uh uh alan watts likes to say uh you're not a result of the big bang you are the continuation of the big, big bang, bang yes. you are the big bang right this is just part of the process right you're not separate from this universe, and no. that's one of the major illusions that we come from, where we think that there we're, we're we're inside of something, right. as opposed to being something. Well, just like how they try to separate it, you know what I mean? What about if when God say, "Let there be light," that yeah. could have been the Big Bang? Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? Instead of you know everyone trying to you know separate it, like you just said, you know, could be all one and the same. You know what I mean? And well, that's really where I try to come from is. Uh, Everybody has some kind of a point to make, and everybody's got some piece of the puzzle. And some people try to say nobody has any pieces of the puzzle, which is also a place to come from. Right. Where um, that's one of my main meditations. That was one of my first meditation um, that really helped me get into the practice of that, which is uh, I am nothing, and I know nothing. Right. And even it, you know, I might be able to uh, uh, state my resources and create a bibliography of where all my information came from. That doesn't mean that where that information came from is actual factual. Right. You know, everything's kind of a perspective of somebody. Yeah. And I really don't know if any of it's true. You know, I mean, so I can't sit around saying was true that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right. And that was a that was a big thing for me to really accept because you have to just kind of let go. Yeah. Just let it all go, man. And and just accept reality for what it is yeah. in this moment yeah. and and not worry about understanding it all yeah. because you'll never understand it your brain isn't built to understand it all yeah you know you're 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 playing a different game which is the illusion of separateness game right where you're you get to perceive the world through this unique perspective with this unique coloration these rose colored glasses that is jamar and that is jason right 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 but it doesn't mean that you are jamar right. or that i am jason right it's essentially we're both part of the same awareness of the universe we are the universe. No, 100%. You know what I mean? And then a lot of people, I think it was Dick Gregory I heard this from. You know what I mean? Once you take the magical sunglasses off, you'll never be able to put them back on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of people walk around with magical sunglasses like to wear like, oh, it's just me. It's just me. But, you know, when you take it off, you kind of like look around like, ah, I don't think this is the way we should be living. Ah, I don't think this we should do things. You know what I mean? Like if we're tribal people, you know what I mean? Everybody paying 400 and some thousand dollars for you know these little houses right here and people don't even know their names of their neighbors you know yeah. what i mean the children don't even play with each other you know what i mean so i don't know I, do you think that they're 
pushing it this way you know what i mean oh, to, yeah. to make people think that you know what i'm saying well if you if you uh, like pay attention to any of the media outlets right that's oh. they're re- really trying to push that trying everyone's to. against you everyone's out to get you right. you know um and i'm not saying that you if you just let your kids run around the streets, they're not going to get kidnapped by some pervert, oh, well, yeah. right? Because there are those people out there, but those people are not the majority of people. Yeah, they're a very rare exception right. to who the majority of people are, which are good people. Most people are good people, no. but there's this this crazy perception of the world where everybody's out to get you. Yeah. Everyone's going to take advantage of you, which there is a layer of that, right? I mean, humans will take advantage of situations when presented the opportunity. Yes. I definitely, uh, I'm not going to say that's not true, but for the most part, I mean, you know, no, everyone's not trying I'll to break into your you. house. They're yeah. not trying to kidnap your kids. They're not trying to rape your wife. You know, it's right. like uh, they're they're just they're in their own game, and they're focused on that. Right. And they're trying to they're trying to solve all these problems in their own life. They don't have time for you. They don't, they don't have time for your bullshit. And uh, and I try to go around like I walk my dog every day and I wave to everybody I see. Yeah, and I'm just trying to too. spread a little love in the air right. because most of the people that I wave at are going to ignore me or look at me like I'm fucking crazy. Right. And uh, it, it hurt for a while to do that, and I continue to do it anyways because um, you know you got to go out there and just spread some love around man yeah. and you're not going to get it back and that's not the point and most right. of the time you're actually going to get some negative energy right and um and you're just going to have compassion for those people and say it's okay they're they're in their own game and their own illusions and they're lost in uh in this negative thought process that the world is is inherently evil or is inherently uh you know everyone's inherently bad and not inherently good but no like 100 percent, like you know like there's a big thing with like the racism thing going on right now and you know i know that there is racism you know what i mean i've experienced it you know i've been pu- you know i haven't been to the certain extent to like you know some of the things that we see on the media but you know what i mean i've been through some things you know i'm a black guy you know what i mean walking through you know a neighborhood you know like ah what is he supposed to be there but you know most everyday average people they're not racist. No. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm not going to say, sit here and say that some of the rules and some of the, you know, things that have happened, you know, those things are racist. But the average day person that doesn't make the legislation or, you know, the average everyday person that has to get up and go to the same job that you go to or rise the same bus as you or, you know, hey, say like me and you, you know what I mean? The average everyday person, they're they're not racist. You know what I mean? So. Right now we have this whole, like you're saying, people pushing narratives of like everyone's racist, but you know what I mean? It's a ridiculous narrative, man. Right, but you know what I mean? Like the average everyday person is not racist. Now I'm not no. saying like some rules aren't set up and, well, the voting law, that's ridiculous. Like, you know what I mean? If you if you can't go get an ID, you have to have an ID to go buy alcohol. You have to have a driver's license. You have to do these things in order to, like, I don't really understand. That's not racism, but you know what I mean? To where, if you have it to where... Okay, well, you know what I mean? We have 15, you know, white kids, and, we, oh, we need one minority. Okay, well, we'll just invite that. You know what I mean? That's, you know, that, that's a little, you know, jacked up. But everyone in this country, in my opinion, you know, you, you kind of have an opportunity, you know what I mean, to make make it of what you will. You know what I mean? You have an mm-hmm. opportunity to to become a business owner. You have an opportunity to go to school. You have these things. You, Absolutely. You know, so I I think... Us, just everyone, we need to look around a little bit more and say, hey, you know what I mean? Well, is my neighbor racist? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, is the lady that I go, you know, to the grocery store with is, you know, is my teachers or is my child's teacher or any of those people racist? The everyday people that you deal with, you know, are those people racist? Because, you know, you can have races, but you don't never deal with those people. Yeah. And if you don't have those people around you, you don't have to worry about race. I'm not going to say you don't have, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, if you know the people around you. And you, racism isn't a thing. Yeah. Well, it's such a it's such a rare thing to run into these days. Racism, man. Right. Like real, straight up racist people that right. just they they make all their judgments on. Well, I mean, unless you're dealing with someone who's extremely left, and then everything's based on race yeah. and ethnicity to those people because they're trying to be the least racist people. Right. And it's this it's this uh, it's this ri- ridiculous hypocrisy that goes on. Right. And. Uh, you know, it's it. People just aren't inherently bad people, right. and the, especially in America. I mean, like, 
say your average person between 30 and 40 years old right now, right? I mean, those people grew up in the 80s. We grew up right. in the 80s, right. man. We grew up together. With freaking like, Captain you know I mean? Planet and right. all that crap. Oh, yeah. Like, Pokemon <laughs> cards, yeah. you know what I mean? Donkey <sighs> Kong, you know, all that stuff. All of, uh, all of us were brought up to, to treat each other as exactly. equals, man. And uh, the, the whole ideology that these people are racist inherently right. is is absurd man i mean it's it's part of our initial indoctrination into the world to treat each other with equality man well, right but i know you were born you know you were born in stockton you know what I yeah mean? Which, you know yeah. what i mean and i i grew up you know here on the north on the north side you know on the military so you know what i mean we had all all races we had white black and you know what i mean everybody was pretty much on the same level you yeah. know what i mean if everybody you know get a bike for christmas you know no one was so much above each other like you know what i mean like it wasn't like the white kids you know what i mean they had all the jordans and all the video games they were sometimes they were just as broke as us yeah you know what i mean so i think we lose the fact of that like you know what i mean like the average everyday person grew up just like us you know what i mean like hey bro let me borrow your you know what i mean i'll let you borrow uh final fantasy 8 for final fantasy 7 because you know what I mean? the only way we were gonna play it if you know what I mean? We bought it. You know what I mean? A lot of our parents didn't have money like that. Oh, yeah. So, you know, like, it's kind of strange. Like you're saying, like, you know, when it's not most of the people our age. You know, most of the people our age are like, shit, you know, Jason's my buddy, bro. Like, he's, yeah. he's a good guy. You know what I mean? But with the social media and you not being able to get out and actually talk to people, you know what I mean? You're just leaving a comment and then somebody's leaving a comment by you and you don't even know that person's intentions. So I think we just... You know, it's kind of a little goofy time we live in right now, but... Yeah, it's really goofy. And, I mean, I did deal with, I mean, t bringing up growing up in Stockton, I mean, as a as a teenager, I did deal with a lot of racism because there was a lot of confusion and separation going on, especially in the public school systems. And uh, it was a very... But it, I think it had more to do with the gang situation than it had to do with generic racism. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of it was a lot of gang violence which happened to, you know, be a kind of a yeah, it was kind of a racist uh, propagation of things because you were in a Mexican gang, you're a Mexican, you know, right, and the North right, right. and the North Anios are Mexicans, right. and the Bloods and the Crips were black. Right. And uh all the goddamn Nazis were white and <laughs> right, right, right. Fuck. And they all sucked, you yeah. know? They were all dicks. Equal, yeah. And they, but you know, that was that was coming from fear, man. Those people were they were living in hard times and in violent places, and they were uh, simultaneously trying to instill fear on others and protect their families. Right. A lot of the times, except for the, you know, I mean, the, the Nazis too were doing that, but those guys were real fucking dicks, real Nazis. When you run into real fucking Nazis, like yeah. the ones that I grew up with in Stockton, that shit is gross. Yeah. And when you hear people like Antifa talking about punch a Nazi, and it's like. You've never met a real Nazi kid, right? You know, the, these people are not someone you're just gonna sucker punch, punch in the right. face. You better watch out. You know, for you're them. going around hitting white people because they're white because right. you're racist. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. So I mean, it. I mean, there are definitely those situations. Right. But again, in, in my lifetime, that was a brief moment in my life where that shit was really around and really, really apparent. Uh, and as I became an adult. It just all went away, man. Well, that's you know, that's so a, that's a definitely a young man's game. All that hate and violence. That's why it's so important. Like you know, what I mean, you 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 have to get out of your neighborhood. You have to see different things. Like you know, what I mean, if you sit there and you 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 stay in your neighborhood, then that's the only thing you're gonna see and you're gonna think of the world. But like you know, you get out and like my whole thing. I play football, so you know what I mean. Like the cap, the trips to California. You know, going into the games to Arizona and, you know, just I played a lot of sports. So just getting out and seeing different people and meeting new people and giving new people a chance is what really opened up my eyes. You know what I mean? But like in California, I don't know if this was done on purpose or not. But, you know, I remember when I went to the studio out there in L.A., they were recording and I was like, you know, you, the studio's tedious. You know, you know. Oh, my God. You know, you could record the same lyric for the. Two hours, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, man, I'm going to walk to the store, dude. And they're like, no, you can't leave. And I'm like, well, why not? The store's like right there. And they're like, no, we all have to go to the store. Yeah. And, you know, we get to the store right there, and it's like, I don't know if they do this on purpose or not, but you got the Crips right here, and then the Bloods right here, and then, you know, uh, 
the Latino gang right across the street, you know what I mean? And it's all right here in this little circle. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of little violence and everything right there because the apartment complex next to this one is a crip and this one is a blood. You know what I mean? If you right there next to each other and the bus stops right here. Yeah. So everybody has to go right here in this common area. You know what I mean? So that's it's going to be violent right there, especially if, you, you know, there's no communication. You know, you can't walk anywhere. It's like being in the jungle. You know what I mean? If the lion don't get you, the tiger going to get you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I know exactly what you're saying. I don't know if that was done on purpose. You know what I mean? That could be, you know, but that's that's the hit. You know, I'm not going to say the history, but you know what I mean? That's someone drawing maps or, you know, someone putting all these people in, you know, in these areas, you know, causing to me, it causes, you know, confliction. You know what I mean? Just being in that small, what, four block radius. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if that's the only thing, place that, you know, and that's the only where you go and that's the only thing, you know, you know, of course, violence and all that stuff is going to happen right there. Yeah. But that's an, uh, and of course that that's again like gang violence, right? You know, that's bloods in the crypts. That's going to be black on black violence. One hundred percent. That's not a that's not racism coming into the 100%. play. One hundred percent. And even if the Mexican gangs are getting involved, this is still gang warfare. Well, first, this is yes. gang violence, right? Man. And uh, it's 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 hard, man. It's really hard for these people who are put in these situations. Yeah. You know they're. They're coming from really hard times, and and they're you know taking care of a lot of people, and they don't have the, the opportunities and the resources that they require to to get themselves out of those situations. And this big perpetuation of this hard situation keeps continuing. Hey Amen. But it, it's going to have to come to a point in time to where people are going to have to take accountability for what's going on. Like you know, what yeah, I mean? absolutely. So schools and societies can't you know change all this. Like you know, what I mean, if you had this child. You need to be responsible for this child. And if you you can't afford this child, then God knows, don't go create another one. But let's figure this out. Like, how can we help this child? Because the children are the most important thing that we have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just feel like we have a lot of people who when you have a child, in my opinion, your life is over. You know what I mean? Your life should be surrendered to that child because, you know what I mean? You should be ready to take care of the child. You know what I mean? Parents shouldn't be praised for doing what they're supposed to do with their child. You're supposed to make sure that child has food. You're supposed to make sure that that child has a house a house over his head. You're supposed to make sure that that child is educated. That's your job as a parent. You know what I mean? And a lot of people, I believe, want to be praised for being a parent, but that's not how it should be. You You had that child. That child didn't have you. You know what I mean? So take responsibility for him. If you or, or take responsibility for him or her, if you know she or he are out here doing these things, then you as a parent need to stop and correct those behaviors. You know what I mean? And I think we've got away from a point to where we want society or we want the teacher or we want everyone to, you know, do our jobs for us. You know what I mean? Society didn't have those children. You had those children. And I'm sorry that you had those children in the circumstances that you did. But, you know, it's your job as that child's parent to fix that before that child gets out of your, you know, your custody. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think a lot of people rely on the public education system to, and the public welfare system to take care of all their problems. Right. And that, doesn't, that just creates more problems. And uh, I, I was reading a thing about uh, when all that came into effect, man. A lot of these uh, lower income communities and these impoverished communities were actually starting to pull themselves out. And then the welfare system came into play. Yeah. And it just gave them this crutch to lean on. Right. And it just started perpetuating itself, incentivizing the, uh, the welfare the state. Yeah, the conditions that they have to exist in to continue to receive this free money. Right. And instead of doing something about their problems themselves, they're like fuck it. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna keep collecting this check 100%. because I mean, humans are going to do essentially the What's easier easy, thing. Yes, that's what we do. That's why we've evolved into this state that we're in. Yes, because we take the easiest route to get to what we need. Right, and uh, you know, where it's just adaptability. And it's nobody's. It, it, when you present people with that opportunity, they're gonna take. They're it. gonna take it 100 percent of the time. They're gonna take that opportunity, right. and take advantage of it. I mean, right. we're humans are notorious for taking advantage of the situation. Right. But so. then that's what I'm saying. The people in charge, why are you, you know, like... Well, they know that shit. Yeah, I know. But, you know, but then this is where we can go into this whole rant and 
you know, we can get into conspiracy theories and things of that nature. But I think us as the people need to just start governing ourselves a little bit more. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like take responsibility for yourself and your own actions. One hundred percent. And, you know, like, you know, I, back in the day, I used to be like, nah, we need to help those people. But, you know, now I, you know, I'm I'm older now. You know what I mean? I eventually want to make some, you know, really decent money. And I, mm-hmm. I don't have any real I don't have any real responsibilities you know what I mean I don't have any children or anything like that so you know why do I have to give my resources you know I worked hard for this you know yeah. what I mean it, it it took a while I didn't you know what I mean I, I had to learn the world I had to learn a skill I had to you know go out there and I had to work nothing was really given to me yeah that's why you got to where you are now right that's what I'm saying so you know I don't I just feel like I shouldn't have to give, like, and don't get me wrong, like, there shouldn't be any homeless. Like, we got too much food. We got too much resources. There's too many buildings. There's too much yeah. everything. No one should be homeless. But, you know what I mean? I shouldn't be funding, you know what I mean, someone holds operation and, you know, this person is out laying on the street. You know what I mean? Like, that to me, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, oh, it's just the distribution of resources, man. And also people don't want to go to these homeless shelters and people that are homeless, a lot of them have uh, mental illnesses and they can't really take care of themselves and they become a, uh, they become real de- really detrimental to the system. Right. If they're around these other people, you know, they, they, they might be violent. They, you know, they, well, they, there's all kinds of crazy things that they go on with these people. They're not just like lazy people who don't want to work. Yes. A lot of them, uh, they have serious issues mentally, and they actually, I mean, some of these people do need to be taken care of. No, 100%. And we have all these jails. We have all these people in these jails that, you know, they're able-bodied. You know what I mean? They may be done something stupid, but like me and you, like, you know what I mean? I've known you for almost a decade, and from the first time I met you to now, it's like, you know, you're still Jason, but, you know, your, your whole thought on life is just different. So, you know what I mean? Being able to sit down that long, you know what I mean? They may want to come out and, you know what I mean, change lives or, or help now. And then, you know, yeah. we can really get those people in there, take the bars off of there. You know what I mean? And, hey, here's a stay, place for you to stay. You know what I mean? We're going to try to help you get on your feet or we're going to help you get on your feet. You know what I mean? A, a rehabilitation program. You know yeah. what I mean? And if everybody can do it, you know what I mean? Like, we can just create jobs. Hey, okay, well, you live here. You know, hey, we need trash picked up at the parks. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we need volunteer crosswalks. Or, uh, you know, cross Carson guards, you know, hey, we need bus aids. You know, what I mean, every like you're saying, everyone is not, you know, able body to go and, 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 you know, go out there and and get a job or get a skilled trade. So how about we do the humanly thing? And, hey, we you know, we need the beaches cleaned up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. You know, just, just think. <laughs> yeah, and we need, uh, you know, more mental facilities. One hundred percent places for these people that are just they're they're not mentally coherent and they're not going to be able to even pick up you know you can't just take them and have them pick up trash or something like that you know they're just uh they just need to be really well looked after and and taken care of because they're a burden to themselves and they're yeah. a burden to society and and that's just a that's just a problem that we have to deal with we can't just let these people suffer on the streets 100%. because they don't contribute and uh and i mean um what was i listening to a lecture by jordan peterson where he talks about mm-hmm. the iq cutoff for the military right if you have a if you have an iq of 80 or less, then the military can't even use you. Oh. <laughs> and you're just this, you're just this person who isn't really going to be contributing and you're going to be a burden on the system. And that we just got to take into account for those kinds of people and really have system, like a nice safety net social system in place to, uh, to accommodate for people that unfortunately weren't born with the uh the capabilities that the rest of us were born with and uh, i know i for a long time was uh under the impression that you know if you just work hard if you just put in the effort you know uh, like for instance me playing me playing bass right i got pretty good at doing that and it was because i consistently put in time and i dedicated myself and sacrificed other things that were going on in my life and eventually over time i got good enough to do certain things right and i was under the impression that everybody can do that and all you got to do is really stop being so lazy right. and commit yourself but um you know it really doesn't seem to be the case anymore the more i i look into these social these social conditions and yeah. these uh, mental conditions 
um, and especially with the people that end up having an IQ under 80, if the military can't even use them, I mean, what are we going to use these fucking people for? Right, but then, yeah. but, but then again, though, isn't that like back in your development years, like your parents, right? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Wh- I don't think so with IQ. I, I think IQ is more of a, something you're kind of born with. You ah, could test okay. a child's IQ and an adult's IQ, and uh, you right, can gain a few points here or there, but basically they're going to stay the same. It's more of a comprehension uh, test. Than it is like a knowledge-based test or like if you can you know repeat certain circumstances uh, and so it becomes this this question of like do we just let these people fail well no like you know like nah we shouldn't let them fall of course not but you know i'm not trying to you know sound like an asshole or anything but yeah. like what about like amazon you know what i mean it's, yeah you know what i mean like i'm, I'm you know you don't have to be, you know what I mean? You don't have to have an IQ that smart, you know, that high in order to, you know, slide this down here, take this and push this down here. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to, yeah, you know, sound like an asshole or anything like that. But, you know, we they can do some things, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, that they can't do anything. Well, yeah, and I mean, uh, for sure they can do certain things, but like... Uh I don't know. It seems like there's definitely got this percentage of of humanity that's just uh, unfortunately we're not sp- like Sparta where we just right, we just we, kill these yeah. people off if they're not really worth keeping around. There's not like this this test that we put everybody through at childhood that goes, oh well, you got eaten by the wolves. Right. That's better for society because now we don't have to deal with the burden of you. Um, it's just uh, if we're gonna make sure that you know like medical science keeps everybody from dying at birth and right, right, right. you know people that uh they can't walk they can't move maybe they can't feed well, see, themselves right, but those people are going to keep that body alive for the entire you know uh, time lap time span that it's actually capable of being alive for it's like that's got to come from somewhere or you know or otherwise we got to just start killing everybody that's not right. <laughs> that doesn't have an iq above 80 i, I would just like 80. i would like to know like the percentage of you know the percentages. You know, what I mean, Let of me the, see. I got my computer here. Of the people who are just like, you know, they they can't do it, as far as the people who just don't want to do it. You know what I mean? I think we have a lot of people nowadays that just don't want to do it, and I'm not. Saying that, I would say there's even more people that don't want to do it, right, and they just would rather take advantage of government systems right. than there are the people that have an IQ below eighty. Right, and that's what I'm saying though too. Like, you know what I mean? I think a lot of people, you know, like you're saying, like it, the easy way is. You're going to take it nine times out of ten. And society has made it so easy for everyone just to, you know, not do anything. You know what I mean? And I understand, the, like, you know, the uh, the mental ch- mentally challenged and things like that. You know, they can't do things. They can't do certain things and they shouldn't do certain things. But we do have a lot of people who should be doing a lot more than what they're doing. Oh, I agree 100 percent with that. Um, you know, people really... Uh like I said before, they're going to take advantage of anything they can take advantage of. And, uh, and we're just, we're kind of stuck with that burden on society. If we want to keep everybody as part of so like if you're born an American right. and we're not going to start doing the whole, uh, what is it? Gattaca, right? <laughs> Where we, we completely manipulate everybody's genetics. And if right. you have some kind of mental yeah. or physical deficiency, yeah. we just can't, you know, we just, uh, terminate the, uh, pregnancy before they're born and all that kind of, um, uh, well, dystopian-ish we might, future. We might be getting there. Uh, well, I mean, slowly, right? So there's like uh, advents like CRISPR, where uh, you know you can actually manipulate your own genetics well, with a package saying. you can get on Amazon at this mm-hmm. point. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, there's there's definitely the future where um, a lot of people will be genetically conditioned uh, from birth, just in general, and right. uh, like it'll just be the whole designer baby concept, cool. and um, and like not it's kind of like steroids and sports right after a generation or two of that where people are able to con, you know genetically modify their children before they're born right. to be you know in the higher percentile IQs and better physical stats and uh, they're it's, it's going to be unfair competition for everybody else that's just having natural born children and leaving it up to the roll of the dice and then you know you have your entire society has no choice but to, but to competitively competitively manipulate their children's DNA before they're born. And again, that I mean, that does lead to a society where we're not catering to this percentile of people right. who uh, they aren't really contributing back to the society, but we're allowing anybody who rolls a bad 
bad dice to still play the game through. Right. Um, and so it's like, it's definitely a morality and a philosophy question of where do we draw the line? Because, uh, what does this say? One in every, oof. That seems like a lot. What is it saying? Like one in what, every 10? It says like 10% is around 80. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 10.564% to hell is the 80, uh, the IQ of 80. So, I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of people, man, you know. In America alone, that's 33 million people if we have a population of 330 million, right? Eey. So, uh, yeah, geez. That's a lot of people that end up being almost completely useless. We can't even use them in the uh, military. Jeez. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, so these questions really do come into play, these morality questions of what are we supposed to do? You right, know, where, do we... are the, where's, where are all these where are all these people coming from? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's just <laughs> um, bad genetics, you know, and like the uh, we've really stopped evolution from taking hold as a, as a, as a society and as a species, man. Like, you know, uh, evolution is really supposed to reward the higher level genetic specimens yeah. with populating the planet with their DNA, yeah, yeah. and the people that are lower level specimens they don't get to right but now it's like we allow everybody to exist and medical science is keeping that going so right, of course right, right. the lower level specimens are breeding with lower level specimens and then i mean i sound like a total fucking nazi right now talking yeah, about this no. kind of shit but uh you know and then they they continue to decrease the iq of the population but simultaneously you know people are increasing the iq of the population yeah. as well people are uh, a lot there's uh, some pretty amazing people out there today yeah and uh and you know it's 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 kind of going in both directions as opposed to going in one direction like evolution would um right. allow it to well you know we, we let people fall at the wayside and right, if right, right. you're born with a physical or mental con you condition you then you, you know it. you're going to get eaten by lions because right. we can't just carry you the whole time 100 percent. uh and uh so it's you know it's it's hard man you know these people did actually you know win the genetic lottery it, when it comes down to how many people we can create through dna right it's a, a, an extremely high number and actually being born in general is just a huge blessing. You know, I mean, it is, it's like winning the lottery like 10 times in a row that yeah. you even exist, that your genetic code actually got pulled. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it kind of sucks to take that away from somebody who managed to make it to this plane of existence. Right. And now you're here in this three dimensional world and we're just going to cut it off for you. Right. But at the same time, you know, there's the whole society thing. But then he gets into the the concept of like what society for in in general, the, yeah. in general, right? Is it is society there just to perpetuate the society, or is society there to make the individual's life a better existence? Because it's like you you have the example of someone who is off the grid, and they're growing their own food and taking right. care of their own water filtration and building their own furniture and. Right. That's a difficult life, and you got to learn a lot of things, and you got to figure out a lot of things for yourself, and you got to really be responsible and take care of yourself. Yeah. And we have the situation where we're in now, where for the most part, I can click a button on my phone, right. and literally anything I can imagine will be delivered to my door within two days, if not immediately. Right, right, right. And I don't have to know how to do anything. Right. Honestly, if I, especially if like I was born and my parents have money, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. they're just going to give me a trust fund. Yeah. And now I literally don't have to contribute shit. Right. And I have, in society, will will really make my life great. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what is, so do we want to perpetuate society for the existence of itself? Or is it is it really just here to make my life fantastic? And if it stops making the individual's life fantastic, is it really worth continuing? Yeah. Uh, I definitely cannot disagree with anything you just said. <laughs> so... I don't know. I think uh, I think life is what you make it. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? I think if you I think it's kind of both. I think if you take life and grab it by the horns and you know just go and realize, hey, like you said like the the off-grid guy, you know what I mean? He knows that hey, if I don't get this wood chopped by the sun going down, then there's not going to be any light. I'm not going to have any fire. I'm not going to have food. I'm not, you know, this is going to be a, a horrible night. You know, just versus the guy that's sitting on the couch, you know, watching the game and like, ah, I want a beer, but, you know, I'll just wait till after the fourth quarter and then, you know, I can go, you know, go get it. Yeah. You know, later on, you know what I mean? But 
I think it's just how you look at it. Like, and it's kind of weird. I just thought of this, like when you said, like the guy that's the, you know, off the grid, he's always kind of got to work. But, you know, the entrepreneur, the guy who, you know, is always working, he is the guy off the grid. You know what I mean? He's not living off grid, but he's always working. And, you know, the guy who doesn't, you know, the guys who don't succeed, well, I should throw the men and women who don't succeed are more like the guys who, you know, sit on the couch and, you know, ah, well, I'll do it later. You know what I mean? Ah, I'll do this. Ah, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a little bit of both. You know what I mean? I think it's just like how you see life. You know what I mean? If you If you see it as where... Hey, I'm just going to go get it. No one's going to give it to me. I have to do it. Then, you know, nine times out of ten, you're just going to do it. But, you know, if you raised or I'm not even going to say raised. If you like you're saying, like you're a rich kid, you know what I mean? You you your parents have money. You know, you don't know what it is to struggle. You don't know what it is to, you know, wear Levi's. You know what I mean? You're used to wearing Gucci all the time. You know what I mean? So you really don't have to have the same urge or you know, the same urgency as the guy who knows, hey, if I don't get this wood chopped and we're not going to eat tonight. Yeah. And like those people, especially like the people that uh, don't have to do anything, you know, stoicism would say that uh, those people have never really discovered what they're capable of because without the struggle, without the difficulties in life and the challenges to overcome, right. you're never put in a position where you have to push yourself past your current state of being right. and actually see what you're, what you you are physically and mentally capable of accomplishing in this lifetime. And I think those challenges are really important. You know, it's, Would, do you think that it'll help like how they do in other countries? Like, you know, I know in Israel, my buddy's from Israel and you know, oof. they, they, yeah, it's kind of rough over there right now. Yeah, um, but you know, uh, everyone's forced to go to the military over there. Like, you know, you, you have to go to the military. You have to, I'm not sure if it's a two year or four year stint. Yeah. When you graduate high school, you have to go to the military. You know what I mean? So do you think that if we install that, you know what I mean? A little bit more discipline, a little bit more, you know, Hey, you have to do something. You can't just sit around and, and not do anything. Like, you know what I mean? If you're not going into college right away or, you know, if there's something that you're not going like if there's something that you're not going to do right away, then, hey, you know, you can go into the military and serve for, you know, two years. You I know? think it'd be great. You know, what I mean, it'll teach you discipline, you know, what I mean, it'll give you a jump start on, you know what I mean, on life. You know, and then if you don't really have anything, you know, that you really want to do, you can go you stay in, you know, work there for 20 years and retire. You know what I mean? And have a good life. You know, if you go in at 18 and you'll be done by 38. Yeah. I mean, you got, well, most men live to what, 65? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? You got what? Getting closer to 72 now, actually. Right. So what, if you retire at 35, you got what, 42 years to live? That's pretty fantastic. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And then if we have more people, you know, more constructive people. So, you know, if all the young people are working and all the old people are here with the children, you know what I mean? That may, you know, even some things out a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the the... The youth is going off and they're fighting for the country, you know what I mean? Because I was listening to something. They're like, well, if we had to go against China's, you know, military, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like if the boots on the ground, like, you know yeah. what I mean? If they were here, you know, like if you don't got a gun, I don't think there's going to be too much hand-to-hand combat. You yeah. know what I mean? And China's scary, man, and especially the moves they're making on like Taiwan and uh, they're threatening the borders of Australia and things like that. And, uh, right. you know, really gearing up a Navy that's pretty intimidating the world government yeah i mean we're we're looking at an uh you know a possibility of like a real world war three kind of scenario about to take place here yeah and uh and you know they're really taking advantage of the situation with biden being in office and him not really yeah. doing anything about them uh you know making all these advances on their territories and it's it's really it's really scary, man. You know they they really see it as a opportunity right now, right? You know to to make moves. Well, they already have. If you notice, they're you know over in Africa. You know they yeah. basically own Africa basically because you know they're bringing in the infrastructure. You know basically, hey, we'll build you this bridge, we'll build you these buildings, we'll build you this school, and then you know you just pay us back. But you know if you can't pay us back, then you just become part of China. Yeah. You know what I mean. So essentially the whole East coast of the United States, <laughs> it's the same, it's the same thing. We got that shit up for collateral well, and, for loans for China. And oh everything. yeah. And California too. You yeah. I mean, Colorado, China and out here too, you know, there's when the crash happened back in 08, they came in and saved us. You know, a lot of people forgot, you know what I mean? They bought most of the bonds, 
you know what I mean, that we had. You know what I mean? They basically saved us back in the day. Well, yeah. I'm not going to say save. Well, they, you know. They I, bought us. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it's, eh, I don't know, man. It's, you know, and then here's where we get into some of the conspiracy stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. with the economy and everything. Like, you know, like, I remember... Well, you know, I'm just going to say uh, A. Jones. I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> you know, I remember hearing him go off and say some crazy things. And I'm like, wow, this guy's crazy. But it was like 15 years ago. And like now I'm just like, um, <laughs> sure, well, maybe he had a point or, you know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of things that he said come tr- came true and, yeah. the, and they're still coming true. Right. Well, you know, he even said something about like a virus or something like that or like a, a what did he call it? Like a, a planned, you know, a planned pandemic or something like that. Some of the things that he used to say, he was going off on all these rants and tangents. And, you know, what I mean, maybe he was doing all that because he was like, I know what, you know, you, you know, when you get excited and you want to tell somebody something and, you know, no one's listening to you. So you just mm-hmm. like, I'm going to go to Mount Everest and I'm going to just stream it. And I don't care how you receive it or anything. You know oh, yeah. What I mean? Well, he's definitely got some kind of crazy ass like ADHD condition or <laughs> something like that. That man is wild. Yeah. But he also he also brings a lot of documentation to the table and yeah. he does a lot of good research. And, uh, you know, the, the stuff he's talking about sounds batshit crazy. And then all right. of a sudden it comes to fruition. <laughs> right. And you're like, fuck, is Alex Jones not crazy? I mean, right, I thought right, he was right. crazy. Right, right, right. And maybe he is, but <laughs> yeah. the things he say, come, they, they come, come true, true or they yeah. are true. And it's like, is the world really that messed up, especially when it comes to the political system and the, you know, the the underground level of who's actually controlling things and pulling strings. Well, see, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's creepy, man. That could be actually where I believe most of the racism comes from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the people who are in office or the people who makes these legislation, uh, legislations, you know what I mean? Like, like what's that? The House of, uh, not the House of, the Congress. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those people don't ever change seats. Why don't they change seats? Yeah, well, that's a that's a big flaw in our system, man. The, 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 the career politician shouldn't be a yeah. thing. It really shouldn't. Right. And uh, and I kind of like the the way Greece used to do it, man. Ancient Greece, you know, the kind of the, the mother of democracy. Right. It was kind of uh, you, would, you would just kind of randomly get selected for jury duty, but you would get randomly selected to office. Yeah. And sure, some morons would get put in and they may, might do something stupid or right. there'd be the collective people in office. But you get a more... Um, legitimate perspective of what society really wants because now you're doing it all by lot it's all random right. it's not it's not people who can afford to bombard the media and buy the election because that's really what it comes down to right, right they just right, they right. buy it who has more money and uh, and who's willing to just be out on the road and campaign and take over all the news stations and social media and all the, yeah. the football games and you see them everywhere yeah. and uh, and they get that two party system going where it's yep. like it's either this guy or that guy and and who has more money? Who has more campaign funds? Right. Oh, well, that's the person that's going to win usually. Right. Uh, and so you're buying the government, and that's really just the foundation of corruption. I mean, it's it's uh, it's always going to lead to corruption if yeah. that's the situation. You can just buy power like that, and then you can make the laws up for yourself. And so, yeah, de- I mean, term limits. I, the problem is, is the people that have to impose the term limits are the people that are going to suffer from that. Right. And. They'll probably never do it, and it's it's kind of one of those uh, those those pickles that we're in as a country, man. Where yeah, you know, what are we supposed to do about that? Well, we're getting really close to the to the Rome, you know, the Romans. Then remember they, yeah. were, you know, how I, I heard a quote a little while ago um, where they were saying like the Romans, we we rule the whole world is afraid of us. You know what I mean? The whole world is afraid of us, but you know what I mean? We can't get anything, you know, right inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're crumbling from the inside. You know what I mean? Like that's exactly what happened to Rome. You know, no one wanted to, you know, attack Rome. No one wanted to, you know, go to war. No, Rome is that's Rome. You know what I mean? But what happened was in the inside, you know, they started infighting. You know what I mean? Parties started fighting with each other. And then that's when shit rolls downhill. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you mess up a whole society based off of ego and, and feelings and and. You know, you lose sight of this keywords you've been using this whole time, humanity. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, you have all this money, you know what I mean, which if people didn't just like cryptocurrency, which I don't really get why everybody's spending all their money on it. But, you know what I mean? Like, just like 
if we didn't accept the dollar as cash, you know what I mean? And one day we just say, oh, this is just a piece of paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's 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 nothing. You know what I mean? It's not going to buy you anything. It's not going to buy you any food. We can be just like Venezuela. So for us to be so money hungry and, you know, who's got a bigger house? Who's got this and who's got that? Like, bro, that's pointless to me. It is pointless. It's really, it's the, uh, it's one of the major causes of suffering, man, is desire and attachment to the physical world. Right. And the whole competition. And like, uh, I love Sad Guru, he talks about, um, he goes, your happiness only comes from someone else's misery. He goes, yeah, you're true. only happy whenever you are in a better situation than the people around you. If the people around you are in a better situation than you're in, then you're miserable and you suffer. But if everyone else is suffering around you and you're in a better situation than they are, you have no compassion for them and you're, you're the happiest you've ever been. And that's really, um, that's a sad psychological state to be in. Yeah. Because A, your, your happiness is now attached to the outside world or the con and conditions that you have no real control over. Right. And, uh, and B, you have no compassion for your fellow man anymore. And you're really just competing with everybody for things that don't matter. You know, like physical objects and and these illusions of power and yeah. and, and just grand ideas of what make you a better person. You know, I have I have a better wardrobe. Right. My clothes are more expensive. My shoes are more expensive. My car's worth the quarter of a million dollars, and uh, so that makes me better than the guy who was born in poverty and right. you know he has a ten thousand dollar Kia. Right. And right. it's like, man, that doesn't. Yeah, but people but, don't realize that the power shut off. Tomorrow, all this stuff that we have is be useless. We'll be right back at the in the in the caveman. Yeah, you know what I mean. If we don't have power, there's no running water. There's no gas running. There's no solar charging your car. You know what I mean. There's nothing. You can't go to the bank and pull out any kind of money. You can't do anything. So if you don't have the skills or know someone with the skills to, you know what I mean, survive at that point in time, everybody's gonna be pretty much stuck like Chuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what I really don't understand why everybody's, you know, and I'm, don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, I want a PlayStation 5. You know what I mean? You know, I want to get a big TV and stuff like that. But, you know what I mean? Just like how you said earlier, to stomp on someone, to know that you're screwing someone over to, to get this house or get this car or, you know what I mean? Anything, anything you do to have to stomp over someone else to get what, to make you happy. I just don't see how people, you know what I mean? I don't I don't understand how you can do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like me as a human being, I want to treat and go back to the Bible, do unto others as you do unto you, you know, do unto others as you want done to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of people need to go back to that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean I mean, you know, that's another problem I see uh is everybody getting oh worked up over the separation of church and state which is a, a super important part of our uh of our society and i definitely am not saying that's a bad thing uh but they want to destroy and dismantle religion entirely as if it's some some horrible antiquated concept and really it's the basis of all of our moral structure and all of our moral foundation and and you can see as this these more recent generations, the millennials and the generation uh, Z kids come up and religion is really frowned upon and looked right. at as like some kind of uh, antiquated concept and that that shouldn't be involved in any of this stuff. They have no sense of morality and they have they, they're kind of floundering in society as to what to do with their lives. And they're clinging to this, these physical things. Right. They're clinging to likes on social media and their cell phones, the most important thing they have. And they can't really exist in the world without these physical objects around them. You know, you can't just have them just give me your phone and sit in the park and just enjoy the breeze for just a moment. Just be in your, right. just be. And that's like, that's not going to happen, man. No, well, you know, with atheism, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to, you know, bash on atheism or anything, but when you when you go from facts, you know what I mean, living your life based off of facts to, you know, theory, a, you know, scientific theory, hey, this is what can happen or this is what we think happened. We're not for sure, but we think this is what happens. You build a society of people who are like, ah, oh, well, I think we should do this way or there's no God, there's no consequences, you know what I mean? Ah, 
forget about it. We don't have to do that. You know what I mean? We don't have to uh, do unto others as they want done unto themselves. We don't have to, you know, respect anything. We don't have to respect nature. There's no consequences for what we do and what we say. You know what I mean? And if you believe in a fact, you're like, hey, well, I know if I kick this person, it's going to hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, that is a guy. You know what I mean? Hey, that is a girl. You know what I mean? Like, we... We've given society too, you know what I mean, too many excuses to live the way that they want to live. You know what I mean? And no one's coming in and saying, hey, ah, shit. <laughs> Hold on, we take a break. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's like uh, the whole morality argument comes down to uh, it, it's important. It's important to have these philosophical and religious concepts in your life, man. It's, it's the structure that it brings is kind of crucial to our existence. It's the reason that it's been around for so long, man. Yeah. And uh, getting rid of it and trying to just live without these basic rules and these basic morals leads to massive depression. I mean, one of the things that I've I uh, that really hurts me inside is uh, seeing the current generation uh, doing literally the exact opposite of everything that I've found to bring so much peace and clarity and joy into my life, which is the, um, the eightfold path of Buddhism kind of things, yeah. the, the Taoism, uh, the, the simple way of being where you let go of all these attachments to self, you let go of the attachment to ego. And, uh, you know, you just, you, you try to behave in such a way that you don't hurt anybody and you don't conflict with anybody and you don't attach yourself to the world and your desires and your aversions to things. And I see everybody in society just doing the exact opposite, man. They're just, they're, they're diving inward to their ego yeah. and they are essentially like living on the morality sense of like the seven deadly sins from Christianity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that becomes their moral principles. Right. You know, pride is one of the most important things to these people now. Yeah. And there's a reason that pride is one of the worst things you can commit. And it's because it really destroys you internally. You know, and if you're running around thinking that you're the greatest person ever and that all these physical uh, ideas of who you are is who you are, yeah. you're going to fall into depression. You're going to fall into all kinds of delusions of self and you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt everyone around you. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's really sad to see, man. You know, I've been working, uh, for me personally, I've been working on myself, pulling myself out of a, of a hole of, of these kinds of despair, depression for several years now. Right. And I look around me and I see everybody doing all the things that lead down that hole. Right. And they're doing it with such grandeur and such... Uh, such confidence that this is the new way. And it's like, there's no new way, man. Right. You know, like, uh, you know, the, like the Bible's 2000 pages, almost the, the new old Testament, and the new Testament, they've gone through damn near every scenario that can exist right. in this human game we're playing. And if you go to the Vedas, you know, of Hinduism, right, right, that's right. like the encyclopedia Britannica collection. I oh, mean, yeah. there's just, <laughs> and you see the commonaries in, in both of them, though. You know, yeah. All the religions. But there's no, there's not going to be a new way. way, man. Like, there's there's ways that work. Right. And there's ways that lead to personal hell. Yeah. And for me, when I'm reading things like the Bible or these, uh, you know, these scriptures, um, when they talk about hell and heaven, I don't really consider those to be physical planes of existence, I, I consider them to be psychological planes of existence. Yeah. When you commit these seven deadly sins, you exist in hell, man. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're basing all of your uh all of your pleasure on lust and greed and pride and gluttony. Yep, yep, yep. Right? You're never going to be satisfied. You're always going to be chasing down your compulsive desires. Yep. And you're going to live in this personal, continual state of hell. And, and it, it becomes very real for you and you fall into these suicidal depressions and everything is terrible. You know, you, you get in that place where, um, even on a beautiful day, all you can see are the bad things. Yeah. And it's because you're so wrapped up in your psychological state and your right. ego tripping 
on who you think you are right. matters. Right, right, right. And uh, yeah, it just it's just uh, it's hard to watch, man. It's hard to watch when you you just can uh, you can see everybody just falling deeper and deeper down that hole. Yeah, and they want to start passing legislation to like convince everyone this is the way to exist and force people and regulate speech so that all this physical attachment and, and, and ideology to their, their ego and their, their, their physical state right. of being, you right. know, is, is more important than their spiritual state, state of being. They don't right. have this morality to fucking rely on. Right. So. But if you don't have to believe in anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're lost. Exactly. You know, just like you're saying, like the principles of, of religion is not to, I would say if you take the good things out of religion, like you're saying, like, you know what I mean? You shouldn't be gluttonous. You shouldn't be, you know, power hungry. All the things that the religions say and all the religions, you know, religion isn't perfect. But like no. you're saying, it's given us a base ground of how we should be as people. You know what I mean? Do unto others. I know I've said that like 20 times, but, yeah. you know, do unto others as you want done unto yourself. You know what I mean? Respect your neighbor. You know what I mean? It's just so many things that we can learn from it. And when we don't have, like you were saying earlier, when we don't have something just to believe in or, you know, like, hey, well, I can do whatever I want to whenever I want to. Who Screw that person. Screw you. Screw this. Screw that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we have a world the way that the world is now. Yeah, people existing in um, in solipsism, you know, the idea that you're the only actual person living this game and everybody else is just like non-player characters that don't matter. Right. And you go through you go through your existence like that and you're going to suffer immensely. Right. Because now you're all alone in this world and you're just Well, a lot of people are alone in the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. They just post these pictures and, you know, they get all these likes. But they don't know any of these people that are giving them these likes or giving the attention. But, you know, they don't talk to their friends anymore. Or, you know, they don't talk to their families or their brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Their life is their phone. You know, this virtual world of people giving you fake likes or giving you fake attention. But, you know, the real people that matter in your life, they're not there. Yeah. Well, maybe they're telling you that what you're doing isn't the best thing. Right. And that's hard to hear. And a lot of times you can just block that out from people. Right. But uh, I think that's really where your personality and your reality comes from. You know, uh, the five people you spend most of your time around and yeah. their approval or disapproval of your behavior. Right. And when you just go around looking for approval and don't take the disapproval in the same uh, fashion, it really leads to, uh, you know, gross narcissism oh yeah terrible behavior terrible uh ethics in general man oh well, yeah. yeah i don't know if it if if it happened to you but i know like once i really started like opening my eyes to things and just kind of like nah, i don't want to be around those kind of people or you know what i mean i don't want to you know what i mean what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong you know for a while there i found myself by myself you know what i mean i didn't like you know i lost like, you know, a few friends that I used to hang out with every day. You know what I mean? Every day we would go do something. We would go play basketball. We would, you know, play video games. And now, you know, I barely even talk to those people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for a while, I was just kind of by myself. I had to find myself, like, kind of how you did, you know what I mean, just recently, you know what I mean, throughout the whole pandemic. You know, I I, I just cut off a lot of things. And, you know, hey, man, what's going on? You coming out? Nah, I'm good. You know, I just wanted to be alone. And I noticed that once I started making those transformations or started doing these commitments, it just seemed like the people that were there for me, they just wasn't there anymore. Or, you know, they were saying, oh, man, this guy's crazy. Or, man, this dude think he know everything. You know what I mean? He's just, I can't talk to him anymore. I can't talk to him anymore. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I, I don't think that one way anymore. I'm not in that one group. So, you know, I see everybody's perspective and I see everybody's side of the story you know what I mean so if I say hey you know what I mean you're wrong for you know treating this person this way well why are you telling me that you know what I mean you're supposed to be you know my friend don't tell me that I'm doing something wrong you know what I mean tell me that I'm doing everything great even though that I'm doing everything wrong you know what I mean but that's not a real friend 
Right, but you know, most people don't don't realize that. They don't understand that. A lot of people nowadays they want to be told like, "Yeah, what you're doing is great." You know, you're no, oh, don't worry about that. Oh, he'll be fine. Oh, yeah, well, no, I don't do that. You you uh, you you're okay. You know, everybody wants to be pat on the back for doing the wrong thing. And then, you know, a lot of people, when you come and you say, hey, man, that's wrong, they want to jump on you. You know what I mean? Hey, well, this guy don't know what he's talking about, or he's a bigot, or you know what I mean? He's racist, you know what I mean? He's... It's the classic one right now. Right, but you know what I mean? Or, you know, toxic masculinity, you know, all these different phrases, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's, you know, insult, shame, and guilt. You know what I mean? If you're not, If they're not getting their way, they're either going to guilt you, they're going to insult you or, you know, just ah, just dismiss them. You know what I mean? And, and and we need real people to start speaking up. You know what I mean? Hey, that's wrong. You know, no matter if you, if they're wrong or right. You know, I mean, if they're wrong, you have to tell them that they're wrong. You know what I mean? You just can't tell them that they're right when they're wrong. And we have a lot of that in society right now. And I believe that's what's really slowing us down from getting to the next level. Yeah. No, I agree 100% with that, man. You know, it's uh it's just a real uh it's a real downhill process we're going through right now. Right. But uh I definitely have faith that it'll uh it'll turn itself around, man. It seems like uh well, No, it's a lot of people. A lot of people are are it's eating themselves and their own their own social circles alive. Oh yeah. One at a time. Every you know, the whole wokeness thing is yeah. uh it can't be you can't be woke enough right. no matter who you are or, or what ridiculous bullshit you say right uh and uh, because they're just piranhas man they're just looking for another thing to eat alive yeah. and as they start running out of people on one side of the party they start turning to themselves well they already did yeah if you notice like now before it was just trump 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 and now they don't have anything to talk about so yeah. now you notice the ratings and everything going down. You notice people like, oh, man, these people were full of crap the whole time. They've been talking about Trump and what they were going to do. And Trump's racist and Trump did this and Trump did that. And what? They've been in office for what? I don't I don't know how long they've been in there, but it seems like it's the same old, same old to me. Yeah. No. You know what I mean? I just think people are too caught up in what they want to believe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, everybody sees the world through their own watercolor colored glasses man yeah. you know it's uh it's rough out there it really is it really is yeah but i'm hoping that you know what i mean the people will start waking up you know what i mean i'm hoping that people start holding people around them accountable you know what i mean like hey dude that you know that that's not good bro you shouldn't do it this way yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, if you're wrong, you're wrong. We got to get back to that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not shaming if I'm telling you the truth. You yeah. Know what I mean, shaming is if I'm telling you something completely off the wall to make you think that, you know, what you're doing is wrong. But if I, you know what I mean, if I'm telling you the truth and the truth is the truth, then you need to accept that. You know, the truth hurts. You know what I mean? You might not want to hear that right then and there, but, you know, you don't have to acknowledge that. You can just move forward with your life and make better life decisions and it'll reflect that hey well you know that person heard you they're understanding hey man you know what i mean i have to do better as a person you know no one's gonna come and do it for me or you know just accept accountability a lot of people don't want to accept accountability you know they want to reflect everything off on someone else and that's just not what life is no like um what is it, Duncan Trussell and Midnight Gospel, man? We have to, uh, we have to f meet reality on reality's terms. Right. And you don't get to make up the rules. You have to observe and and accept what game you're playing here. Yeah. And uh, and and trying to yell at everybody and force your fantasies into reality. Right. Doesn't make them reality. Yeah, but then again, that's what like you know with the whole atheist thing when you don't when. Or even you can throw even every religion, like Christianity yeah. and everything, when there's something not factual that you can base it off of and you want to make up your own reality, then, you know, that's usually what happens. You know what I mean? You make up your own reality and then you just live your life that way and the people that you're raising, they're like, ah, oh, well, this person doesn't live his life that way, so I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to do this. And it just, you know what I mean? Yeah. It rolls downhill and we get to where we are now. And that's essentially what belief is, right? You... uh 
you don't know what you're talking about right. and you have no proof or evidence to back up your argument right. so you just go well i believe it right and, and instead of saying i don't know right instead of going well i don't know everything in the universe there is to know right you go well no i have a belief and i'll fucking kill you for that belief if you tell me <laughs> that it's not true yeah uh well that's the arrogance of humans yep well, shit, man. I think uh, we've been talking way f longer than I expected to be talking. I've been trying to keep them under an hour, an hour, an hour almost an hour and a half. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I that's could... what happens, man, when you get into these deep conversations. Yeah. You know, and you... It's like it's just good talking to, like, you know, like-minded people sometimes. I agree, man. You know what I mean? Like, you talk to some people that's just... You can't talk to them. You know, they get upset so fast and... Like, geez, bro, I'm just trying to, you know, just just my opinion on things. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, you're an idiot. You're a bigot. Uh -huh. You tell someone maybe uh, maybe you won't feel so bad and be overweight if you watched what you eat and you exercise. Right. And they're just like, fuck you, man. Well, I Don't tell me what to do. And it's, I, I'm, I'm perfect. And it's just right, like, right. no, it's a, I'll get a pill from a doctor and yeah. it'll fix all my problems. Right. And it's like, no, you are responsible for your body and your mind, and you should probably take uh, a different approach to your daily life. Right. And maybe you'll feel better, you know? I mean, no, 100%. most people who eat healthy and exercise aren't overweight and don't feel like shit all the time. Right. They're just like, well, we're not friends anymore now. But then that's too much, you know, taking yeah. accountability. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I know I'm not in the best of shape right now, but I can't just say, oh, man, that's McDonald's fault. McDonald's should be making <laughs> veggie fries and they should be going, you know, uh, 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 you know, plant based. And, you know, they shouldn't be giving us this fake meat. No, you know, what I mean, I should get yeah. up and exercise. You know what I mean? Don't not eat McDonald's. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, 100 percent. I uh, no, I'm I'm. I'm adamant about not eating that crap. And, uh, well, I haven't ate it and like, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, I used to eat it like all the time. It was just so convenient. But like over the past five years, you know what I mean? Maybe I'll go like maybe five times the max out of the whole year. Yeah. You know what I mean? I try to stay away from it. And, and I noticed like now when I don't eat it and I do eat it, Oh, man, it's like... Uh, oh, destroy you. Oh, man. It's like, you know, I feel sick afterwards. You know, I remember one time I ate, like, uh, the 20-piece nugget. And oh, like, yeah. Yeah, and, then like, it was like, oh, man, it was fresh. It was hot. You know, it was good. And I swear, like, 30 minutes later, I was all just... I, I felt horrible. And then, like, you know... Not I mean, real food. Yeah, and I didn't feel better until it all came out. Yeah. No, like, I've been, uh, I've been struggling with my vegetarianism. Because I'm doing the, the you know, yeah. I, I don't like to say I'm, a, I'm not a Buddhist or I'm not anything, right? right, I, right. I'd say I'm, I'm agnostic, which right. I don't know shit. That's right. where I, that's the stance I like to take. I don't know shit. But this whole Eightfold Path and the Buddhism thing, it, uh, it's been really working out very well. It works wonders for my physical state of being and it works wonders for my mental state of being. And so um, since it works, I continue to do it. And I've been focusing on the vegetarian side of that thing. And it's really freaking hard yeah. to make all your meals vegetarian. I mean, for me personally, um, I love meat. I love I love I barbecuing. I love you I know. Can't do it. It's just it's it's really hard. More power to you. But can, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. I can do uh, pescatarian. Yeah, <laughs> you chicken and fish. Yeah, but I gotta have some kind of you know some kind of protein. Yeah, well, I mean, we had shrimp yesterday. You know, oh, yeah. so I I mean, I'm not I'm not there yet for right. sure. But yeah. I've noticed the difference whenever I. Whenever I spend the whole day eating vegetables right. and just doing the, and I, and I've nailed it, right? Like I woke up and I worked out and meditated and ate my vegetarian meals all day long and took my vitamins and stuff like that. It's like, I feel amazing. Yeah. And especially after the meals, right? Like there's this, when I eat meat, um, there's like this food coma that happens right afterwards yeah, yeah, where you your body starts, yep, you know, yep, it starts yep. processing yep. the meat, which takes energy away from your system. Yep. And uh, and that just doesn't happen whenever I eat, like, rice and vegetables. Yeah. And uh, it just is like, okay, well, my stomach's full. I feel great, and I have energy, and I just continue mm -hmm. about my business. Whereas if I get a burger or something, it's like, well, that's uh, that's the end of my day. Right. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 
freaking veg out on the couch and then pass out because I ate this big burger. Even the burgers that you would kind of make at the house, do that still do the same thing? Yeah, pretty much. Um, pretty much most meat does it to me now that I've been doing the vegetarianism thing and uh, it. Uh, Even the organic meat too. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, you it, uh, it's a different process um, for your body to process the meat. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, I mean, your your stomach definitely deals with the veggies and the rice and that kind of thing real easily, man. Right. I mean, your digestive system just just handles that business. And especially since I've been doing it more, right, because your microbiome changes. Right. And uh, and so it's it becomes more efficient at breaking those kinds of fibers down. Right. But... Uh, but yeah, it's definitely been uh, it's it, it's one of those things where you realize this is kind of the right way to treat your body. Right. Not to say I know anything about nutrition, just nah, for my personal see, thing. Nah, we got to we have to stop that, bro. We yeah. Like er, the college education. Now, I'm not downplaying a college education. I'm not downplaying going and knowing exactly what. But we can read a book and kind of understand nutrition. Like you're not gonna understand nutrition to. 100% as someone that goes to school and that's his career or his or her career. You yeah. know what I mean? That you're not going to, but I can read a book and I can understand it. You know what I mean? Like I remember a guy saying, are you a phys- you, you, ha- Yeah, I, I, I like reading the physicist books. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I read a book, you know what I mean? And I have a little information. I'm not saying that I'm a, a scholar, but you know what I mean? I know the base knowledge of what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like we have to stop that. Like, you know what I mean? We have yeah. to stop putting ourselves in these categories to where oh well if you don't have this degree then you shouldn't be speaking on it yeah no if i know what i'm talking about like if i'm just talking out of my ass to where i'm talking about well the sky is red and the reason why the clouds are there is because it's dust and you know stuff like that then yeah of course but you know what i mean if if i have a valid point and i'm on topic and i understand what's going on why can't i speak on these things you know what i mean yeah absolutely i always like to just take the stance that uh Everything I say kind of comes from my own personal, well, personal experience. Does. Yeah, exactly. And so I, um, uh, like, I just find it important for me to to make clear that, uh, like, I always do the I don't know shit concept. So yeah. I go, well, this is my personal experience of it, and that's all I can really right. contribute to the conversation is my personal experience of what's happening. And and I have I have read quite a bit on nutrition, mm-hmm. and it's. You know, I mean, it's definitely complicated, which, uh, you know, I don't really. Right. Everybody's different. Everybody's body yeah. is different. You know, everybody's body digests things differently. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? There's just so many different things, you know what I mean? And that's why I can't believe that everything is so random. You know what I mean? Like everything. I'm not saying that religion is religion, but there's got to be something out there. You know <laughs> what I mean? Something had to make this happen. Well, I just feel like. uh <laughs> For me personally, uh, a guy who's done a lot of psychedelics, uh, <laughs> you know, I uh, when I'm when I'm in that kind of state of just I don't know pure per, pure spirituality where you kind of are separate from your body, yeah. you're separate from reality. I really um, I come back from that with the the whole concept that it's all just love, man. Yeah, like. The whole universe, existence in general, none of this has to be here. Right. It serves no purpose. And it's just a representation or like an expression of some infinite source of love. Uh, and everything that happens within this existence is either uh, either love or the separation from love, hate. right? Hate or fear. One of those things, right? Where, yeah, where you're you're trying as hard as you can to remove yourself from love, which is still love. Right. <laughs> it's still right. it's still influenced by love, man. I didn't think about it that way, but yeah. you got a damn good point on that. Thank you. Because if you love, you know what I mean? Just think about it. If everybody loved the planet, yeah. you know, we wouldn't litter. You know what I mean? We wouldn't throw stuff in the lakes. You know, we wouldn't do certain things. But, you know what I mean? Now we're on that thin line between love and hate, and it's like, well, fuck this lake. I yeah. hate this lake. Well, you know what I mean? These people are going to do this anyway, so fuck them. I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you're absolutely right. I never thought about it that way, but yeah. Yeah, it's just that's all there that's all there is out there, man. And the whole universe exists because of love. We exist and we're having this conversation right now yeah. because love, man. Because yeah. what else is there? You know, if there was if there's some incredible force out there making it all happen. And I don't think any horrible shit we do 
in this existence of ours matters, man. No. Like uh, the whole concept of uh, it goes back to like uh, the singular awareness or right. in Hinduism and Buddhism, they would call it Brahman, the Godhead, which is all things, yes. all awareness, all physical and spiritual and energy and all of it. It's all just part of one thing, which is for me, uh, it's just this overwhelming infinite source of love. Yeah. And we, we're just here to create different possibilities and random expressions. And maybe you're having a dramatic existence this yeah. time around. Maybe the awareness is creating this uh, beautiful existence for you. Maybe you're going to be born in Africa and die when you're six from AIDS, you know? Well, do you, do but you... it's like, it's all possibilities occur in this beautiful spectrum of, of the world where it's like literally anything, right? You've, you've heard the expression, anything you can think of has happened and it's happened so many times you can't even count. Right. And it's because w we are given this opportunity to create, you know, this is the creation space, man. Right. And it's only here because why not? Yeah. But, but do you think that besides like, you know, if, if you were born with, you know, AIDS or something like that. But do you think that most people are in charge of their happiness? Yeah, that's the number one thing you're in charge of, man. Mm -hmm. You're the only one. Like my, like uh, I, my, my girl stopped asking me after a while because um, I used to think that the world and my conditions and what was going on around me is what made me happy. Right. And um, and through my personal experience and my journey down this rabbit hole that I've been going down. The, the real concept is, um, and this is Buddhism and Hinduism and, you know, most philosophies and therapies and everything all kind of agree on the fact that you are the only source of your own happiness, man. Yeah. It all comes within, from within you. The outside world only affects you if you allow it to. Yep. Um, now, you can't, you can't say that person made me angry. That person made me sad and that person made me happy or these conditions did such. It's you. You responded to your external conditions in a specific way and you created your happiness and you created your sadness and you created your anger. It's like when you're in a great mood and someone does something stupid or cuts you off in traffic, but you're in a great fucking mood, man, you just laugh at that person and let it go. But if yeah. you're in a bad mood, you create more suffering and you you get involved with that situation and you become miserable. Not because that person cut you off, because you made yourself that way. Right. And it's all, it all stems from, some, from within you. And like uh, Sad Guru, one of my favorite people, he says you can, you're responsible for the most complex chemical factory in existence. And you can either be a great manager of that chemical factory and be blissed out all the time and create love and happiness within yourself and spread that out throughout the world or you can be a terrible manager of your manager of your chemical factory you can get wrapped up in this physical world wrapped up in your attachments and your emotions and your yeah. aversions and your desires and uh and suffer and suffer immensely yeah you know there's nothing there's nothing that hurts more than your own psychology playing against you man oh yeah you know, physical pain is, is definitely one, there's, there's definitely extreme aspects of that, but whenever you're suffering psychologically, I mean, you know, the, all you want to do is die. Uh, you just want to stop existing. Yeah. I know I do, or I did, uh, and it really, it really is just the end-all be-all of your happiness, man, whenever you're wrapped up in all this bullshit. No, 100%. 100%. That's why I, I try to stay away from social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? I noticed that a lot of people fake their happiness on there. And then when you actually roll over there, you're like, bro, but I thought you were. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I completely that. And I just ask you that question, you know what I mean? To get your opinion, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, a, a lot of people don't think that, you know, they're in control of their happiness. You know, a lot of people believe that the circumstances that they're born in or, you know, the things that's going on around them is what's making them miserable. That's the illusion. That's what Buddhism calls the grand illusion, yeah, man. I 100% agree. It's like someone who gets diagnosed with terminal cancer. A lot of people are grateful that they get that, and that's, it seems counterintuitive. Right. But they become so self-aware 
of the finiteness of their existence. Yeah. When that happens, there's a now there's a deadline on it, and now every moment they're hyper aware of the moment, right. and they've never experienced life from that perspective anymore. Yeah. And they're just like, I'm so grateful that this deadline got put on my life because yeah. at least these next three months, I'm gonna exist in this state of presence yeah i'm gonna be here in the moment and be and and it's like instantaneous mindfulness it's something that i practice every day um, my meditation puts me in a state of mindfulness and it would be called it's called sadhana where you take that mindfulness throughout your day nice. and, and when shit gets in your way and whenever uh any interaction you're having you always want to stay in the back of your mind a little bit right. reminding yourself to yep. be present uh letting your thoughts go and not attaching yourself to thoughts of the past or anxieties of the future. And that's really the game you're supposed to be playing, man. Yeah. And when you get wrapped up in this shit, and that's what, that's what they talk about, about an awake, awakening or enlightenment. Right. It's, it's just coming to this realization that you're not your thoughts. Right. And you're not your body. And you're not your mind. These are all things that you are responsible for. Yeah. Just like your cell phone. You're not your cell phone, right. but your cell phone will constantly bug you. It'll constantly be going off. It'll constantly be feeding you information yep. that doesn't make you your cell phone. And the same thing's happening with your mind and your thoughts. Right. It's like your notifications are on all the time, and you're trying to constantly grasp at them. You're trying to constantly pay attention to every single thing. And then not only are you doing that, but you're saying, this is me. If I have this thought, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, determines who I am. Right. And it's, that's absolutely not true. Your mind's going to come up with so many random, crazy-ass thoughts. And that doesn't yeah. mean that that's who you are as a person. Right. And, but you get trapped in this this illusion that those are your thoughts. Yeah. And they're just random things. Your brain's just going to come up with random things. It's a random pattern-recognizing software, and it will it'll throw all kinds of shit at you all day long. And it's trying to it's trying to stay in control because really we're this automaton, we're this automatically functioning, artificially intelligent. It's not even it's intelligence, right? Like right. Uh, robot, this meat puppet that's yeah. cruising through life. And it's essentially by the time you're seven years old, you've learned all these habits from your parents and the right. people around you, oh, yep. and you're going to propagate that throughout the rest of your existence. You're going to learn new ones and drop old ones. Right. But essentially, you're this thing that's just set on autopilot. Right. 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 And uh, it's understanding that you're not not driving it either. Right. You know, you got to say, I'm along for the ride, right. which is hard to do. And that's what Ram Dass talks about. He right. says, uh, observe your life as if you're standing on a bridge over a river and the river is kind of y your life oh, yeah. flowing along. And there's nothing you can do about it, man. Yeah. It's going to keep flowing. You're on the bridge. Right. You're separated from it. And uh, and just observe it and be grateful yeah. to have the time that you have. Right. So, yeah, I've been <laughs> I've been deep in it, man. I can tell. That's what I'm saying. I I can totally tell, man. It's like night and day from the first time we met until now. I'm like, shit, I need to come over here and meditate too, dude. Please <laughs> do. I am. I'm almost done with my first meditation video. It's a basic meditation video. Nice. Uh, and it's just it's a it's one of Ram Dass's meditations. Seeing a uh, Ram Dass, I never would have thought he would be said. Yeah, days. none of this stuff. I, I Ram never would have thought he would have known all this stuff. But now he's like, man, he's the guru now. Now I'm gonna have to start calling him when I got you know I mean questions. Please do. You know what I mean? I'm gonna say, hey, bro. And like now, you know, you're reading the Bible and everything. I'm like, God, bro, I need yeah. to call. Hey, what is Deuteronomy line 27, 32? <laughs> what does that say, Jason? I'll have to go grab my. I'll have to go grab the Bible and look it up. I don't got it memorized. That's a big ass book, man. Yeah, no, nah, I know, but there's some people out there, man, that that can tell you word for word, man. They'd be like, nope. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is what you're looking for. You need to go to uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 12, uh, dash three six six two three. It's right there, <laughs> and it says. You know what I mean? But I give a lot of those people credit, though. You know what I mean? They, they're, that's hard. Yeah. But well, they're perfectionists at their craft. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's the amazing thing about the human mind is it's capable of storing that kind of information and recalling yeah. that kind of information. Yeah. If you're that committed to it, you know. But for me personally, it's a, uh, it's more of just a understanding of reality without me imposing my own view on it. it. I've yeah. kind of, I've, I've tried to let go of any, um, 
any personal thought or um, uh, assumption that I have of what the world is and how it works right. and just kind of study it from a, an open mindset. And, you know, like, uh, you know, I've, I've been reading a lot of stuff. Maybe I don't agree with all of it. Right. Um, but I still, uh, especially stuff that I don't agree with or that I would assume that I is not really up my alley. Right. I'm, I'm diving right into that kind of stuff to see what it has to say, what it has to offer. Right. And I'm reading it with an open mind. As I'm saying, it's the only thing you can do. Yeah. You know, it's the only thing you can do is just go in with an open mind and try to understand because people, you know, well, I'm not going to say just people, but like you said, there's going to be things that you don't, that you, that you're going to hear that you don't like, but is it true? Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it is what they're, is what you're reading and what you're, and what they're saying, yeah, it hurts, but is it the truth? Yeah. And if it's the truth, then, you know, we need to process it and move forward with it, accept it. You know, you may not like it, but it is what it is. Yeah, and in this life, no one's going to do it for you. Yeah. That's one of the beautiful things about it, man. Uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't even have to wake up, man. I don't even encourage people to wake up, man. Yeah. Stay asleep. I will sleep. Enjoy the ride. That was the purpose in the first place, you yeah. know? You're, you're supposed to be here right. to create these possibilities and get wrapped up in it like it's real. Right. It's supposed, it's supposed to be convincing. And when you are convinced that you're real and that this world is real, you're playing the game right. And yeah. it's only assholes like me who <laughs> fucking totally lose their mind trying to tear it all apart and figure right. it all out that, uh, you know, I come to this certain point where I realize it's not real. Yeah. What is real in the first place? Uh, and and, uh, and that I was, uh, I was attached to an illusion. I, I thought that you know, the world owed me something or I had right. to be some great person or I had to accomplish some great thing. Right. And none of that's true, man. Right. You don't have to do anything with it. Right. Honestly, like the, 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 the greatest realization that I've ever come out of from this is that right now is perfect just the way it is. Yeah. This is a perfect moment, just like all moments. And you don't have to be anywhere else and you don't have to do anything else. Yep. All you have to do is sit back and appreciate how beautiful it is right now, yep. regardless of what's going on. It's, it's, it's a gift. It's a gift of love oh, yeah. that the universe has given you and that you are. You yep. are the universe's love. You exist because the universe loves you and you are the universe. Yeah. And... Uh, Says it in the Bible, but I'm not saying the Bible's all in yeah. all be all, but you know, it's got yeah. some pretty good gems in there, you know what I yeah. mean? Well, that's it, you know. I mean, if you have something that that speaks to you, right. there's nothing wrong with that, right? And, right, right, right. Um, I, I, for me personally, as long as you're open minded about it, as long as you're not coming from the same place I was coming from yeah. three years ago, well, where me too, I thought I was, I knew what the hell I was talking about, me too, and it's like this works for me. That doesn't mean that it's right, and that doesn't, doesn't mean wrong, right. that it's for everybody else. Right, right. Either. Right, right. Like, this is what I'm doing is my own path, right. and what you're doing is your path, and right. they're both beautiful. As long and as you're not harming nobody along the way, why not? Yeah, exactly, man. It's, uh, that's the main point, right? Right. Don't fucking steal from people, don't hurt people, and, uh, you know, do. Do you right. do what speaks to you, man? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying with like all this stuff that you know we have going on. Everybody's pushing these agendas. If you did the stuff in your house, no one would even know. Yeah, no one would know, and and it's no one's business what you're doing. You know what I mean? As long as you're not stealing, killing, pillaging, you know what I mean? Yeah. Raping, doing all that extra crap, then you good in my book. I don't care what you do. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's your, that's your life. It's your existence. You do you. Yeah, even if you, like, even, what was I watching? I was watching that movie about that cult that bought all that property in Oregon. Oh. And everybody's like, these fucking people. And right. it's like, dude, well, those let, people them, choose, yeah. let them believe whatever they want right. to believe, man. And then the people who if are over there, it makes them yeah. happy. 100%. And it's, that's none of your business. Right, right, 100%. You know, who cares if you disagree with it or if it's, <laughs> even if it's completely illogical and crazy. Right. What I believe is illogical and crazy. 100%. You know, like, and, and no offense, but like the whole concept of like, there's this king in the sky that's, right, that's right, looking right, over right. everything and watching you at all times right that's kind of crazy man yeah and but it's it's that's why it's all your, belief you all know your sins you do something wrong you know what i mean you can forgive 
Yeah. yeah no. But it's, 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 you got to have something. Right. You know, right. you got to, you got to. You gotta have some kind of path to walk. You gotta have some kind of sense of morality, or you're just yes. lost. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and you get you get so wrapped up in bullshit, and because yeah, you can believe whatever you want to believe. Yeah. You know that's what happens when you can make believe whatever you want, and yeah. then you know manifest it, and everybody's supposed to respect it. Yeah. Well, everybody, no, everybody doesn't have to respect shit. No, and that's what yeah. people. A lot of people don't understand that. They think that you're supposed to, you know what I mean, cater to me. No. You know? It's not the way it works at all. Everybody's allowed to think what they want and say what they want and do what they want. 100%. But I don't have to agree with any of it. No. And n neither, you don't have to agree with me either. Right. If, but the difference is, is I won't kill you over it. I'll just, exactly. I'll wish you well. And right. I'll, just, I'll send love your way. And, right. And I just respond listen, with compassion, yeah. man. That's what I'm saying. Listen to what everybody has to say. And if you don't agree with it, then you, you don't agree with it. But, yeah. you know what I mean? You don't have to insult them. You know what I mean? Or, ah, oh, well, he's a moron. He's not a college educated. Ah, you know what I mean? That's yeah. just causing more division. That's it, man. You know what I mean? If this is not your cup of tea, then don't come back over here. You know what's <laughs> going on over here. You know what I mean? You know what they're doing. You know you know how they get down. So yeah. if if that's not your get down, then don't come back. Yeah. And, and just respect their platform, you know? And everybody has that right to do it their own way, man. Yeah. As they should. Because that's what we're here to do is create... Right. Exactly. All possibilities. You may not agree with it, but you should. But you should respect it. You don't have to agree yeah. with it, but you should respect that person. It's called common courtesy. Yeah. Because if you want to be happy. Exactly. If you don't, you know, like, like compassion for your fellow man, right? That's right. definitely a very Christian concept and something that Jesus preached a lot. Right. Even when he was getting nailed to a cross, he was compassionate for right. the man nailing right. him there. Exactly. And because he knew that he was he, they aren't different he's not right. separate from that person that person's lost in this illusion and he th thinks he's doing the right thing even though he's f hurting somebody else right and he felt compassion for that man and you got to do that for everybody but you do that for yourself because if you're not if you're embittered by everybody around you in your life and you can't have compassion for people who do wrong to you or do wrong to themselves or have invalid opinions then you're going to suffer more than they are. Right. You're going to you're going to go through life suffering and bitter and hurting internally, man. Right. And it's it's only it, it, if only for your own sake. Right. You have to learn to love everybody. And that was really one of the hardest things that I had because I have a lot of built up internal trash all of us do you know for my whole life where I have my own all of us do my bro. own bullshit opinions about things and I feel like people should be a certain way right. and there's this um like david burns talks about it in uh, his book feeling good which was a great book that helped me get out of uh initially get out of my depression which kind of started me along this path which was the should word right. where you're anytime you say the word should this should be that way or this shouldn't be that way that's a cognitive distortion of reality right things are and whenever you're wishing things were a way that they aren't you're hurting yourself and yep. you're going to suffer because of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's one of those things, every time you say it, it should trigger in your mind. There's that cognitive distortion again, that should word, right. uh, where you, you're only hurting yourself with that kind of thought process. And that took a long time to really, but it starts popping up Yeah, and it starts, you start recognizing it more and more and it's these practices of recognizing specific speech, specific words and specific thought processes that lead you to destroying your own internal uh, thoughts. traps and yeah. thoughts that are causing you to suffer. No, 100%. 100%, man. Yeah. But shit, we were supposed to end 30 minutes ago. Right. <laughs> and here we are another 30 minutes in. No, I, I love talking to you, Jamal. I know that's all I was going to say. It always happens, bro. Yeah. It always happens. Like, we'll start a conversation, and then it'll get deeper and deeper, and then we'll go to something else, and then be off way off talking. You know, we'll start talking about Dragon Ball Z and <laughs> end on... You know, <laughs> as you think it's going to be a world government one day, and you know what I mean? Oh, so. there definitely will. I could go on about the world, the new world order shit for a while. That's yeah. inevitable, though. Nah, it was coming one way or another. Yeah. You know what I mean? But 
Shout out to Alex Jones. He said that too. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, shout out to Bill Gates buying up everybody's farmland to control the entire food supply of the planet. Yeah, that's kind of scary. And then now that him and Melinda's not together, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, we about to find out that coronavirus got everybody's relationship. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rough one. That really... Uh, that really showed you who you were, uh, who you were with. This is yeah. one thing whenever you got jobs and you both work all day long, oh, yeah. you get to see each other for two hours mm-hmm. at the end of the night. But right, then right, right, right. You're and stuck then, with the, you're stuck trapped at the house with that and, person. But the crazy thing is, bro, I think that could be part of the biggest problem that we have right now. There's a lot of people together that just shouldn't be together. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, you see the inflation. You know, what I mean, well, things have been crazy expensive for a while, but you know what I mean. The wages haven't gone up, so you know you have a lot of people who. Ooh, excuse me you know what i mean may can't survive without each other you know they build this life with each other and you know what i mean the only way to maintain it is to stay with each other yeah but i just don't like this person i can't stand this person <laughs> but i need her rent money yeah <laughs> or right. his rent money you and know? people bring that up to me all the time and i go and and i go this is why Trump was saying, make America great again. It's not because yeah. he wanted to fucking segregate bathrooms and schools, right, dickhead. Right, it's right, because right, he wanted right. people to be able to support their family on one basic job. Right. So you could work for Ford and just be on the line. This isn't like hyperly skilled trade. Right. It's a basic job in America, and right. you can buy a car and a house and support two kids and a wife. Right. And it's like, and the economy was stabilized by yeah. that system. And now it's so out of whack. Right. And everything's so far. Like they've, they've systematically reduced the wages or made the wages stay stagnant yeah. and increased the cost of living to these astronomical levels where, I mean, what are you supposed to do? Especially these people that are born now, you know, the Gen yeah. Z, the millennials. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically I mean, we're fucking millennials, right? And right. it's like. Uh, we're barely at the place where Supposed buying a house be, is right, realistic. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And uh, and like I mean, the generation after us, these Gen yeah, Z kids. I mean, will saying. they ever own a fucking house? Uh, yeah, but that's the whole. They're getting them, you know, programmed them. Well, you don't really want to own a home. You yeah. know, you just want to rent it. You don't want to be responsible for all those things. Yeah, the government will. The government will own everything, and everyone will be happy about it, right? Right. Well, we'll see, bro. I I definitely don't want that to happen, but. You know what I mean? I, I hope people realize that, hey, we are in control of what happens. You know what I mean? Like, I really believe if everyone started snitching on each other, oh, my God, my neighbor went outside for 10 minutes without his mask. Yeah. You know, they're taking pictures and things. I really think it would have really gotten bad. But, you know, like, I think Trump, you know what I mean? I think Trump was a good thing, you know what I mean? Because now people aren't so afraid to kind of, you know, say what they need to say. And a lot of people are like, man, that's bullshit, dude. Like, I don't, I'm not finna sit here and allow you motherfuckers to tell me the sky is orange when I know it's blue. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that if you notice, like, you know, a lot of people now, they're just like, well, what's up, bro? Like, you know what I mean? You haven't done anything you said you were going to do. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? People are actually, you know, calling them out. You know what I mean? And you can actually see it. You know what I mean? Where people are just like, man, I'm not trying to hear that shit. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we need, you know, people like that. That's definitely one thing you can't say about Trump. He went in there and fucking threw that wall up and <laughs> put tariffs on China. And well, I didn't agree. Well, he did know, everything. Yeah, he, I, said, he, yeah. he said he was going to do something, right. and he did it. Exactly. You know? And I he, liked that about yeah, him. Whether yeah. you agree with it or not, he wasn't lying. Right. I mean, a lot of times he was lying through his fucking teeth, but right, he didn't lie right. on his, uh, what right. he ran on. Right, right. Well, you know, it's just like a man thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trump was like, you know, hey, I'm, you're not going to bully me. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get, you know what I mean? I'm going to tell you guys what you're going to do, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. No, yeah. screw you guys. I'm not doing it your way. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people just don't like, you know what I mean? That's why a lot of people that, like, tell the truth. Like, you know, Jordan Peterson and, you know, that new guy, Kevin Samuels. Yeah. And, you know, all these guys that just come out and just, just tell it how it is. Well, you're not supposed to say it that way. You're supposed to say it nice. Yeah. But it is what it is. Is that the truth or is not? You know, and it can be a little harsh, but, you know. It's hard to dance around everybody's feelings whenever you, you say it bluntly and it still takes three hours to get the concept across. Right, but a lot of people don't want to hear the concept. They just yeah. want to hear what they want to hear. And if you if you don't understand what they're saying, then you're the crazy one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's really become a huge problem, too, is that we can't have an honest conversation with each other in this country. If you stand if you stand hard left or hard right, right. 
you, there's not going to be a dialogue. Exactly. And that's one of the biggest problems. I think that's one of the reasons that like uh, like our, our our parents and our grandparents were like, you just don't talk politics or religion with people, right? Because people are fucking crazy, right? And they're going to uh, they're they're going to be so dug into their own holes right. that there's no point. Right. All you're going to do is piss everyone off and ruin the time you were having. But see, this is why we always get stuck talking for 16 hours. Yeah. Because you know what I mean? It's like it's good to have a conversation. You know what I mean? And we don't yeah. always agree on everything. We should. You know what I mean? We have a, a good common base on things that we agree upon. But you know what I mean? We don't agree on everything. You know what I mean? And being able to have a conversation without you know, people trying to put their agenda into it or, you know what I mean, there's or their beliefs into it. You know what I mean? It's just refreshing to talk to someone who can, you know, understand what you're saying and understand that, you know, you're not attacking anyone. You're just stating your opinion. You know what I mean? And yeah. and for me and you, that's why we always, you know what I mean? We we talk for so long because we can just jump and we can reflect off each other without, you know, pissing one another off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's all we really ever have is our own fucking opinion, man. Right. It's it. That's all you'll ever have is your own opinion. Right. I'm wondering. Collect facts and develop an opinion about it, but it doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. Right. And as long as you come from that place where you're like, this is my opinion, this isn't the holy truth of the universe right. where I know that I'm right about all things that come out of my mouth. Right. Then you're having a conversation. No. But if you're so stubborn that you think you know everything, then there's no reason to talk to you. No. Because you already know everything. So what are you, what's you going to get from this conversation? Right. If you already think you fucking know everything. 100%. Yeah, so I was say, yeah, we better wrap it up. Yeah, I'm gonna run out. Of, like, I'm hey, run what out of tape. going on, man? You're supposed <laughs> to be taking me out. <laughs> I am supposed to say we're gonna go see. Uh, we're gonna go see a jazz show. Sorry, Ange. My uh, my Zen master from the monastery is playing saxophone tonight downtown. Yeah, so no, I'm gonna man. go see go, that dude bro, play. Go, because I know we always do this to her, and mm. she is like she and she's great because she doesn't like you know what I mean. But I feel so bad because she's like, an amazing woman. You know what I mean? I feel so bad because we're always like, no, nah, we'll be like an hour. Or, nah, we'll do this, and no, nah, we just do this real quick, just real quick. And then you know, four hours later, she'll uh, come back and like, oh, you got you're still here. Yep. You know, she's not saying it like that, but you know. She's like, damn, can I have my husband back? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, man. Go ahead, brother. Get your wife and get ready. Go get all pretty and, man, go have yeah. a good time tonight, brother. Well, it's been a great time talking to you, Jamar, you as too, always. As I love always, hanging man. out. Yeah. and I'm Definitely uh, got to come back. Yeah, I would, too. You definitely got to come back. We, yeah. could just, we can do this all day long, man. Right. But next time, maybe uh, we should just have a few topics, you know what I mean? That, maybe we'll write some that, topics down. <laughs> That may help us. Yeah, because we can ramble a lot, man. Oh, yeah. I know I was rambling a lot. I was, too, man. You know what I mean? Just repeating myself, saying stuff like, oh, man, trying to sound smart. <laughs> uh, it's hard. You got the cameras on you, and you're trying not yeah. to leave dead air and stuff it's yeah. hard to do this kind of stuff yeah. it isn't it isn't but but it's it fun is. though it's it, it, it's good when you have you know good dialogue yeah and it's even good to you know i would love to get on you know if you can find somebody that has a different opinion that we can have an honest conversation without you know what i'm jumping over the table you know if we can find someone you know what i mean because uh, there, there's a lot of good people out there that have a lot of great knowledge you know what i mean and they yeah. may not agree specifically what we agree with and you know, they may say something you may make you scratch your head like, huh? Yeah. Oh, I I totally, I, I mean, my opinion's changed over the years yeah. so much. Mine too. On all kinds of things that I thought I was right about. Yeah, mine too. That's why I just go, I don't know what I, yeah. I'm definitely not right, but <laughs> no. I have to think something. But thank you, bro. Uh, thank you for letting me come in you. and enjoy your new setup. I definitely have to come back. It's nice, right? It's nice. Oh, yeah. I'm telling I you, bro. It. No, bro. I'm telling you, you're going to do some really good things, bro. Yeah. It's just the beginning, man. Everything's opening up. And you know what I mean? I'm in the YouTube right now. They want to hear real people, real conversations. You know what I mean? So I tell you, bro, you're going to you're going to do it, man. Well, thank you so much, man. Uh, I want to thank my guest Jamar for coming on the podcast. Thank you for Space Brain, shout out Space Brain. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're amazing. Uh, definitely hit the subscribe button, the like button. Please, please that support my brother. You know all that jazz. And uh, this has been to the fullest with uh, Jason Froberg. Peace. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching to the fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.